Happy Sabbath, family. I must say it's a privilege for us to be in the house of God once more. We had a week full of trials, tribulations, but God has seen it fit to save us. And we are here today to worship him, to praise him, and to glorify him. Let us leave every thought of doubt behind as we come to worship our Savior. We will begin our song service this morning. I ask that you join us in singing lustily to the Savior. Before we do so, may we stand for prayer. Father, we want to give you thanks for this another of your Sabbath days where you have allowed us to come into your house to worship you. As we are about to go into our Sabbath school, we ask for your guidance. Bless those who are on their way. Guide us and protect us. And cause that we might receive a blessing when we have, might have left this place. These are other mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first hymn is number 12. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Number 12. Thank you. 
383, O oh, day of rest and gladness. 383. Sabbath school, and we'll begin with Him 525. 525, hiding in the. Let me, let me check. Let me double check. Let me make sure I'm, I'm with it. I'm sorry about that. The hymn is hymn 545. Thank you so much. Savior like, Savior like a shepherd lead us.
standing for the scripture reading. Happy Sabbath, church. Okay, our scripture reading this morning comes to us from Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7, and from Hebrews 6. Verse 1. Here it goes. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. 7. Rooted and built in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. And Hebrews 6, verse 1 says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Hear the word. Happy Sabbath, church. Please bow your head for the prayer. Heavenly Father, as we gather here today in your presence, we ask for your blessings over all our brothers and sisters today. Give us courage. Give us victory. Help us to understand, Lord. Help us to take in everything that the preacher will preach today. And give us, give us all, help us, Lord, that we'll all achieve everything we ask for. In your precious name we pray today, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning again, everyone. A happy, happy Sabbath to you all. It's so good to see you. How was your week? Was it good or bad? Good? Good? Nice. All right. So it's New Believers Day. So we have the new believers in stages. So I have adopted the old new believers, which usually sits over there. Hi, old new believers. I know we have the new believers, the newly baptized members. Hello there. And of course, there are my the normal brothers and sisters. <laughs> Hi. All right. So it's New Believers Day. So our focus is on our new believers, right? We're not neglecting the older members, but let's just pay attention today to our new babies. All right, joining me for Sabbath School is Michaela Chin. She's gonna be my assistant this morning and I'm yours truly, Charmaine Bailey Bloomfield. And this morning, the Sabbath School comes to you under the theme, like a tree, 
growing in Christ. So, you know that plants are very important to us, right? In fact, if we have more in Port Mormobi, we'll get more rain. So, plant a tree, all right? It's, vi- it's very vital for our survival. But for a plant to grow, it needs, it needs to be tended to. It needs a lot of stuff, all right? Do we have any gardeners in here? Anybody who lo- Come, Sister Emma, put up your hand. Nice, all right. So, spiritual growth in a Christian's life can be beautifully compared to the growth of a plant. So, we're going to be exploring that analogy right now. Okay, Michaela? All right, so, here is it. What's your name? Yeah, what's your name? Hmm? You're Morgan. Miss Morgan. Sister Morgan. Okay, so Sister Morgan is one of our new believers. So this morning, I'm going to be naming this plant. I'm going to be an Adam this morning. This is Sister Morgan. All right? Anybody knows the name of this plant, by the way? Apart from Sister Morgan. This is, this is a Z. They call it a ZZ. ZZ. So the ZZ is short for some long word that will twist up my tongue. But it's a ZZ plant. But this morning... This plant is Sister Morgan, and it's young. It's just shooting up, as we can see. All right, so this is you, Sister Morgan. This is you now being in the church, getting baptized, and deciding to follow Christ, okay? So what are some of the elements that Sister Morgan needs to grow? To grow in Christ, for your spiritual life to grow. And I know older members you know, but bear with us, all right? Michaela, what's the first one? A plant needs solid and healthy roots. So you need solid and healthy roots. You know why? Just as plant needs solid and healthy roots, Christian spiritual life must be rooted in God. So our foundation lies in our relationship with him, Roots anchor the plant. It provides stability and it allows it to absorb nutrients from the soil. Likewise, our connection with God through prayer, Bible study, worship, it nourishes our soul and helps us to be rooted and grounded. Okay, Sister Morgan? That's one, all right? Two. Plants need space. Plants need space. So... We too as Christians need that, we need to find a little quiet corner, a little closet, so we can just mull and think about the goodness of God. We need to, it's, the, the world is so hustled and bustled, all right? We need to, to move away, you know, and to just find a, a quiet time during the day to just mull. And the Lord asks him to guide you just like the plant. So we need, we need space. We can't be crowded all the time, all right? What's the next one? Plants. So that's two, Sister Morgan, all right? Plants need the right temperature and soil. All right, so if you don't have the right soil, if the plant doesn't have the right soil, it's going to wither and die, all right? So likewise as Christians, our hearts need fertile soil to grow spiritually. All right, the word of God serves as our spiritual soil, regularly immersing ourselves in scripture, help us to grow, to learn about him, and most importantly, to bear fruit. All right? Okay, that's three, Sister Morgan. The fourth one. Plants need water and nutrients. Exactly. So our spirit thirsts for living water. And so I don't want to mess up the place. I'm just going to put a little bit. Okay, so there you go. Mm-hmm. So, some plants need more, some more water than others. We know that. Irrespective, plants need water to grow. And so, neglecting, we must continue to see God, allowing his spirit to quench our spiritual thirst. All right, neglecting this vital nourishment can lead to spiritual dryness. All right, getting it? Good. What's the next one, Michaela? 
Ants need air and light. Water and light. Sorry, air and light. Okay? So, uh, as Christians, we need, to, we need the spaces around us that do not contradict the Spirit of God. So, for His light to shine upon us, we have to be in a place where He can work with us. So, more than likely, you're not going to find Him in the rum bar or in the club. I, I, I don't think He goes there. I don't think he can go there. <laughs> all right, so we need, to, we need to be in a space where he can commune with us at all times. All right? And then the last one. There are many more, but the last one. Lastly, plants need time. Time. So, um, spiritual growth takes time. Don't let anybody rush you. It takes time, and we progress through stages of learning, experience, and maturity, patience, and perseverance. Perseverance, let me tell you, you're going to need perseverance. They're very essential, all right? Um, persons, are, the devil is going to be at you. They're going to be testing you. You have to persevere. And the only way you can do that is being rooted and grounded. And I told you what you need to do to do that, all right? One thing I won't neglect to tell you also is that you are to bear witness. It's like how you have heard the good news and you have accepted it and you, you're feeling that joy. Share it with somebody else. All right? Share the good news with somebody else. And very soon, you will mature. You will mature. You will grow and you will flourish. All right? But for you to reach from here to here, you have to do all of the elements that I told you. Amen? All right. I won't forget the old, the old family. Let's go across here now. So, um, we have some of us who have been here 20 years, 30 years. I don't know if we've been consistent in doing all of what I just said. All right? So, this is, this is you, people. Anybody know the name of this plant? It's a color lily, all right? Now, it, it looks a little droopy, don't it? It, it, it looks like it should be healthy, but it, it, it's sort of drooping. And this is how some of us are, some of us who have been here 20, 30, 40, 10, 5 years. You know, we, 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 we get mature, but we think we reach, and we don't adopt these elements that we, I spoke about earlier. And so we begin to look like these. All right? And all we need to do, you know, all we need to do is add a little water. Yeah, some nutrients. And you'd be amazed at how it just nice and big and beautiful. So, we all are gardeners. In a way, we are all gardeners because we have to tend to our soul we have to tend to our lives or else we will gonna be we're gonna be lost we're gonna get dry in fact i have here that to be in consistency you have to be consistent in your spiritual practices right you have to intentionally create space for god and you have to surround yourself with godly influence amen did we get that all right, so Michaela is going to do a song for us now and to round it out. Am um, I just going to invite all the newly baptized members from the tent, just in case you weren't here last, you can know where you're supposed to sit. You're supposed to be seated in this area. So just make the move. All the persons who were baptized at the tent, newly baptized members, please move to this area. Thank you.
to be a strong young tree. Michaela, that was beautifully done. God intends for us to be strong, young trees. And it's now time for our lesson review. And at this time, new believers, what happens is that we divide the church into units and you are assigned a teacher who takes you to the lesson review. So I'm going to ask all our teachers at this time to stand. Let me eyeball you, see if you're all here. And then you're going to take over. Okay, we seem to be all covered. So, have a good study. You have half an hour. Thank you. Happy Sabbath. Happy, Happy Sabbath, 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 Sabbath. Good, Sabbath. good. good. <laughs> has been, has been a great week. I must say, a challenging mm -hmm. one. Yes. You know, um, God has been so good. Yes. We can mm -hmm. never truly mm -hmm. give Him the praise that He deserves because we, mm -hmm. we're always gonna fall short fall because short. He deserves so much. That's true. He deserves mm -hmm. everything that is in us, mm -hmm. and I am so happy to be back with you on set. Yes, so yes. It is always yeah. a pleasure. Yes, man, we do. Mm -hmm. you. I want to wish you a happy Sabbath. And as we mm -hmm. go into the lesson this week, yes. you realize that we are in school this quarter mm -hmm. under the curriculum of our course of study of the great controversy. However, mm -hmm. this week we would have zeroed in on mm -hmm. you know, the central issue. Mm -hmm. And as we looked at the lesson this week, the, the issue that is of primary importance mm -hmm. is what we would have dealt with this week. The issue that takes center stage, mm -hmm. you know, in simple terms, Sister West, the, the matter that is in dispute between two parties. Mm -hmm. We are in a conflict mm -hmm. between heaven and hell, Yes, a conflict between God and the devil, a conflict between good and evil, between right and wrong, sin and righteousness and we are in a life and death controversy mm -hmm. sister west so as we go into the lesson this week mm -hmm. i just pray and hope that all of us for those who are listening and tuning in online or online um, viewers we mm -hmm. truly pray that mm -hmm. this week will be a blessing well, as we go into the lesson yes i invite you just to 
bow your heads with me out there in the cyberspace <laughs> so that we can be assured that the Lord is with us yes. as we go <coughs> to the review. Father, we thank you so much for your love. We thank you so much for your kindness. We thank you so much for the hope that you have given us that even in this great warfare, it's a psychological one, it's a physical one, it's a spiritual one. So we are asking, oh God, that as we as we traverse the battle, the battlefield, we pray that the Holy Spirit will tune our hearts ever once. And as we look at the lesson this week, as we review this lesson, we invite holy angels to come and influence us and the Holy Spirit to come and teach us as the master teacher. We pray that all that is said and done will go to your names, honor and glory. Be with Sister West and myself as we discuss what we have gone through this week. And may your people out there in cyberspace receive the blessing you have in store for all of us is our earnest prayer in Jesus' most holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Mm -hmm. So, Sister West, uh, I must say that this lesson this week is a very deep one. Mm -hmm. It's one that we would have been looking at uh, ever since we accepted Adventism. Right. We come to know that we are in a battle. Mm -hmm. uh, a battle that is not an ordinary sword fight. <laughs> it's not an ordinary, ordinary gun fight, but <laughs> it's against principalities. That's right. It's against powers mm -hmm. and the rulers of the darkness of this world. So before we go any further, Sister West, I would like for you to bring us through the memory text. Isaiah 41 and verse 10, could you read for us the memory text and also just to elaborate on what the text is mm -hmm. saying to you personally and mm -hmm. for us as a church. All right, so welcome again, online viewers, and we do yes. hope that you um, meditate on you know as we reflect on what the lesson was saying this week that you may think on these things and apply them to your lives um, it says fear not for I am with you be not dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you yes I will help you I will uphold you with my righteous right hand wow. yes. now this is a this is really an encouraging text for anyone who is going through whatever situation because the lord is saying fear not it doesn't matter yes. what or who um you are having a problem with god is saying fear not because he promises that i am with you yes always yes. with you even to the very end that's what he said yes. He said, be not dismayed for I am your God. So if you make God your God, he says he's your God. And he will do what you need him to do when you need him to do it. So for me, it means that whatever difficulty I'm going through, I know yes. I have a counselor, someone I can go to for Lord. advice. Praise I know that Lord. I have someone who's a comforter. He can comfort me through any um, emotional feelings, any disturbing thoughts. He can comfort me. He's yes. also a provider. Wow. He yes. can provide yes. right on time. Even when it yes. and you know what notice with God? He he waits. I don't know if he's waiting, wait. Till he <laughs> reaches the very last. Yes. Yes. And when he shows up, you yes. cannot gain say that it's not him. Yes. You cannot give yes. the praise to no one else. Because yes. when he does it, he does it in such a way that you have to say, No, all this happened. Yes. Because God wants to show that he is with you and he's faithful to what he says. Mm. He says he's with you. And he will strengthen us. Another part says, I will strengthen you. So if it is that you feel weak, oh, whatever your one. situation yes. is, he says he will strengthen you. Yes. And I have found him to do that many a times. When I lean on him for strength, yes. I receive it. Yes. So I'm just encouraging anyone out there in, as he said, cyberland. I like yes. that. Yes. That God will strengthen you when you do, when you, at the time that you do need it most. Yes. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Praise the Lord. What I, what I got from the memory text, Sister West, I, I mm -hmm. noticed something very, very significant. I, I see where 
we have three I will. Mm, uh, okay. I, I think the Lord could have said, I will strengthen you mm -hmm. and uphold and, oh, you okay. mm -hmm. and help you. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah. But, but the mm -hmm. Lord wants us to realize mm -hmm. that as, mm -hmm. you, as you brought out mm -hmm. rightly, whatever yes. the situation mm -hmm. you're in, whatever mold yes. that you're in, mm -hmm. He speaks specifically to, it. to that. Yeah. To that um, that situation yes so yes. he says i will strengthen you mm -hmm. i will help, help you. you i will uphold, uphold you you know yeah. I, I just i just love mm -hmm. i just love and i'm encouraged by by his text you know as i was sharing with you an experience before we yeah. came on set yes mm -hmm. that um this morning you know um it was about uh about worship time on mm -hmm. the morning yes i was just thinking through a certain situation mm -hmm. and I was saying to myself oh my sometimes I I feel like I'm just between a rock mm -hmm. and a hard place mm -hmm. you know and just that's how we are reasoning mm -hmm. right yes. here just as how we are talking mm -hmm. on set I just hear that that that, that sweet voice mm -hmm. just say to me mm -hmm. no if you're caught between a rock right. and a hard place mm -hmm. if that rock is Jesus yeah <laughs> that hard place will that's be right. a soft place you know and i, I that's I, good that's good it meant mm -hmm. so much to me yeah. it's like i just came right down amen to amen. ground zero yes. with my with my 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 you know emotions yeah. emotions mm -hmm. you know and as you said earlier that god is so real to us mm -hmm. and he means everything mm -hmm. to us mm -hmm. and he he, he he always get to us Mm -hmm. by the lessons he, he yes. teaches us yes. and we, we we seem never to forget the lessons mm -hmm. when he teaches mm -hmm. us we seem never to forget that's because true. we can always say yeah mm -hmm. man, this is really god, god. Mm -hmm. speaking to us definitely all right so um we are looking at the central issue mm -hmm. the central issue now as we studied this week we we, we got a picture of Christ on the Mount of Olives yes speaking with his disciples and there is a particular statement that he made which uh, woke them mm -hmm. to reality mm -hmm. when 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 he said to them assuredly I say to you no when Christ says assuredly, assuredly. Mm. it means something you can take it to the bank yes yeah. because <laughs> in the first instance mm -hmm. we know that he doesn't lie that's right but when he says listen mm -hmm. assuredly, assuredly. Mm -hmm. this means something mm -hmm. so he said assuredly i say mm -hmm. to you not one stone shall be mm -hmm. left here upon another mm -hmm. that shall not be thrown down right. now if we should think an hypothetical picture of the mount of olives mm -hmm. encounter we we would observe an overwhelming interest of the disciples in the discourse with Jesus, mm -hmm. when the great teacher said, Assuredly, I say to you, mm -hmm. not one stone shall be left here upon another mm -hmm. that shall not be thrown down. When you, when you look at this, mm -hmm. Mr. West, what, what came to mind? What, what, what really this said to you as you look at the lesson? You know, it, it means it doesn't matter what you try to put in place yeah. to prevent the situation once God determines that this is going to be done it must be for a specific reason so allow god to uh, to make it yes. come to fruition and so at that time i'm sure they never wanted that to happen yes and i i think i've heard rumors that someone tried they have made attempt to like try to build back that same place but yes. to not wow. because once yes. god says this is something like what the text says if god closes a door it is closed nobody closed. can open it if it's yes. open nobody can close it yes. and so when god does things and allow things to come to pass whatever the situation is it is for a reason because they needed to to learn a lesson the jews back yes. then they need to learn a they were putting their trust too much in that temple mm -hmm. i think they were focusing so much on the temple and the temple and not the focusing building. that the person yes. yes who the temple was made for yes. them to worship they're rejecting him mm -hmm. so god wanted god, god permitted that to happen because you know their worship was now becoming like in vain yes. it was now becoming in vain yes. yeah and they're losing significance of you know what their worship is about so as we we look at the lesson we realize that satan has a twofold strategy 
Mm -hmm. And that twofold strategy is both to deceive and destroy, and destroy God's mm -hmm. people. And it says here in the last paragraph of Sabbath's lesson, mm -hmm. it says what the evil one fails to, to accomplish, accomplish through persecution, persecution, he hopes to achieve through compromise. compromise. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is saying something very strong, mm -hmm. Sister West. Yeah. It, it is saying now here that persecution is a part of the devil's strategy mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. he, will, he will use to, to accomplish his own purposes. Right. And also, if he doesn't get you in persecution, mm -hmm. he's, he's trying not to get you through compromise. But it, it says here that God is never caught by surprise. Mm -hmm. And even in the most challenging times, he preserves his people and I say amen to amen. that because mm -hmm. it is very assuring yes. that whatever it is that we are going through, all we need to do is to heed that warning, that first warning, mm -hmm. be not deceived. That's right. Be not deceived. Mm -hmm. Put your trust in the Lord and even in the face of destruction. And we are going to see that further yes. with, with the Christians because their story really is going to be a repeat mm -hmm. of what needs to happen before Christ comes. Before Jesus yes. comes. Mm -hmm. All right. So with that, Sister West, is there any mm -hmm. other point that you want to make before we jump in the Sunday? Yeah, yeah, I was just wanting to emphasize what the theme says. Um, yes. um, selfishness, love mm -hmm. versus selfishness. And you know, that's really just a controversy indeed. Yes. Because that's what life is all about. Now, every day when you look at conversations or circumstances, you see one out of the two being displayed. Yes. Either selfishness or love. Oh, wow. So we're either representing or um, the devil mm -hmm. or Christ's character is being manifested in us. And so each day we must pray and say, Lord, help us to manifest love rather than selfishness. Every choice we have to make, you know, yes. it, is, it either comes down to, am I going to please self mm -hmm. or am I going to love God and choose his principle over pleasing myself? So it's really a battle. So, so you're mm -hmm. saying, Sister West, and um, you're, you're saying to us here that mm -hmm. whatever decisions mm -hmm. we make in life, yes, it's mm -hmm. either for or against. That's right. So mm -hmm. we're, 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 we're whatever decision it is, mm -hmm. uh, a coming out right. of the great controversy. That's right. So, so mm -hmm. if I if I decide to do good. Yes. I'm saying that I'm standing with Christ and if mm -hmm. I decide to do but, evil, yeah. I'm standing on the side of, of the, the enemy. enemy. Beautiful. That's beautiful, right. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right. So we, we see here mm -hmm. on Sunday under mm -hmm. the caption a broken hearted mm -hmm. savior. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, when I when I look at this this um particular lesson, it it drives home mm -hmm. something to me. Mm -hmm. Because it says here that as Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives, overlooking the city of Jerusalem, his heart was broken. His heart was broken. Mm -hmm. Now, it goes further to say that Jesus did everything he could to save his people from the coming destruction mm -hmm. of their beloved city. Now, what I realize, there's a text that says, he came unto his own. And, and his, his own, own was refused. Mm -hmm. Now, it is one thing when you are despised used or rejected by strangers mm -hmm. Mr. West, it's one thing but mm -hmm. when you're when your own yeah, use own. abuse and reject you mm -hmm. it, it's not a pretty thing yeah and, and the, the text brought out jesus mm -hmm. went when he saw the stupidity of the people how mm -hmm. they rejected the only way you know they they rejected the only hope <laughs> this friend that's a good so adjective, says, the stupidity yes. of the people yes <laughs> it's really stupidity because right. he came to save them and mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, sometimes we say that probably if we were in that time, we would not. Yes. Sometimes I said, mom's the word because we don't know what category would have fallen. But we, we, yes. we, we must take hope now that we can look back at their mistakes and, and like try to and learn from it. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, yeah. so we see uh, Ellen White brought out in the Great Controversy, I think that's chapter mm -hmm. one, says that they, they're their best friend and only helper. Mm hmm they rejected wow. their best friend and only helper. Mm. The Jews had a bad habit of killing the prophets, flinging stones <laughs> but on the God sent messengers. <laughs> That's right. Mr. <laughs> West. Yes. Uh, oh, oh, God, God longed to save his people, but mm. they were not willing. My Are gosh. we seeing the same attitude and behavior today in the church? Oh, I am no, I don't know. 
you know, they would probably make excuse to say, I mean, they had Christ there live in person and they yeah. did that. And then, all right, so let me put it this way. We're doing the same thing, yes. We are indeed doing the same thing. I mean, oh, wow. we, we hear in God's word what he is um, here to do for us. We see mm -hmm. the result when you choose a better way. Yes. It it's just like health. People see, some people see and know that choosing a way, a, a, this path in terms of eating and exercising, just a better lifestyle, yeah. the, the, the joy that you experience. But yet still, some people just decide, oh, I mean, no say, you know, they, we say it with mm -hmm. the phone more to now, I say this is the better way. But boy, this something tastes good. So you yeah. see where the self, selfishness mm -hmm. and love come in, so yeah. they, they, they choose to please self, self rather than choosing out of principle. Yes. And it's just a constant battle and a constant fight. And so that is where the statement comes out, we need to die a greater death yes, to self. Because self. that's really the problem. You know, I, I, really, I really love the, that word you use, mm -hmm. Sister West principle oh, okay because right. what mm -hmm. i've come to realize is that mm -hmm. the only way that we will win mm -hmm. this battle mm -hmm. is not because we feel mm -hmm. not because we want to please ourselves mm -hmm. but to choose that because of principle, principle. Mm -hmm. so so yeah. it's that that principle that mm -hmm. we live by yes because it takes principle to live by the word of God, mm -hmm. not feeling. That's right. Because you know, faith, <laughs> faith has nothing to do with, with feeling. Mm -hmm. Faith That's true. has everything to do with believing what mm -hmm. God says yes. and doing by principle, principle what, what he says. He says. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus' love mm -hmm. for his people flowed from a heart of infinite love. Mm -hmm. He repeatedly appealed to them in love to repent mm -hmm. and accept his gracious invitation of mercy. But the sad reality is that the reception of mercy is taken lightly. And um, as the, the evangelists mm -hmm. would say that, um, mm -hmm. they made light of it. <laughs> yes. They made light of it. Um, mm -hmm. I am reminded of um, yes. Pastor Sean O'Connor. Um, you know, we, we, for instance, coming out of this, this crusade, crusade yeah. mm -hmm. yes, um, where we, the church has learned a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord has revealed so much to us even, yes. even the things that we we knew before you all it right, yeah, right. Be, became mm -hmm. new to us yes, that's because true. of the mm -hmm. way the lord puts used them to be presented right. yeah. so um what i'm what i'm saying sister west based on the warfare that we are in mm -hmm. we're looking at a broken hearted savior mm -hmm. and i'm i'm seeing why the lord's heart was broken mm -hmm. it's all because he has made he made every provision everything every provision for us to be saved. Mm -hmm. and it, it brings it brings me to a little a little closer to ourselves mm -hmm. here as we would for instance if you have your your child mm -hmm. and you do everything for your child mm -hmm. to 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 live a certain kind like, of way right. you grow him up in the right mm -hmm. way but then you realize that after he's grown choose a different yeah, that, path it, it took on a different path mm -hmm. you, you can just imagine how broken oh, hearted wow. you would yeah. be and if, if we mm -hmm. can feel this way oh i just imagine that the Christ. infinite lord yeah. how he he yeah. would feel when he had done everything mm -hmm. to save us mm -hmm. he he went through hell just to save us and we made light of it sister you know i was saying to my husband yesterday i said why God, God have a warm time every day. Oh, know, my word. Yeah, because I'm saying, <laughs> we're just in our little corner. But when you think about everybody else and what mm -hmm. they're doing, some, somebody killing someone right here, so somebody taking a suicide. Oh, God, God's heart yes. must be heavy when he has to bear all of this. His child, the backsliding, this one. Oh, wow. Oh, my. Yes, yeah. yes. And after, after he would have done so much. Because the children of Israel, they would not surrender. They would not eat. Heed. They would not yes. believe that Christ was the Messiah. Yes. Christ was just chasing after them, oh, wow. and they would not. Yes. They yes, would not. Yes. You know, it's mm -hmm. a, it's a, it's a sad, it's a sad outlook mm -hmm. of um, the, the the church in mm -hmm. particular. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know if you you, you would have had, had this experience, mm -hmm. uh, probably in a in a in a in a different way, but. Um, there are, there are some times when you might be on the mission field mm -hmm. and you you present Christ to some persons right and and the spurn mm -hmm. that they would they would uh, they mm -hmm. would make and the the, 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 the rejection yeah. that they would give up 
Mm-hmm. You know, you who knows the danger. Right. You, you know, you feel so mm-hmm. broken hearted. That's true. You feel so down. You Can you imagine Christ? They're mm-hmm. so stupid. Mm-hmm. Why is it that yeah. life is afforded them and they choose death? He said the devil yeah. has painted things in such a way that they see what we are doing as stupidity. Mm-hmm. Yes. And um, simplicity and foolishness. They really can't understand and comprehend all of this going to church. Some, t- some of them even think it's a pretense. Yes. Some of them think it's holding them back. They have many different thoughts out there. And mm-hmm. some of them see it as, some people like to depend on themselves. They can't see this idea of this faith and trust God thing. They, yes. Because they're impatient to can't wait on how God God operates and when he wants to answer. So it's, yes. ma- it's a myriad of things why yes. some people would spurn him. But but God, if, if, we, if we just remain faithful and pray for them, for their eyes to be open yes. so that they can see what, that what we're experiencing is something to covet yes. and join us. With. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So we see here that um, Christ said to the disciples, mm-hmm. you, you, you study the scriptures as he relates to the, to the Pharisees. Mm-hmm. Right? You study the scripture and in them you mm-hmm. think Mm-hmm. that you have eternal life but <laughs> why is it that you think you have eternal life mm-hmm. in the scriptures and mm-hmm. yet you you don't you don't deal with the scripture you don't obey the scripture with this mm-hmm. this um this urgency that mm-hmm. you, you should now if it's a life and death situation mm-hmm. you know it, it brought me back to one sabbath um pastor kent mm-hmm. okay he came yes, in the church okay. one mm-hmm. sabbath mm-hmm. And, he, and he said listen man um, he was addressing the the church at, mm-hmm. at evangelism time, at um, okay. personal ministries time. Mm-hmm. And he said, listen, if someone is droning, mm-hmm. will you just look at him and say, oh, he's droning. <laughs> oh, wow, look at him, he's droning. Mm-hmm. Or you would make an alarm mm-hmm. to say, look, the person is droning, he needs yes, help. Yes. So, so I'm saying mm-hmm. that what Christ is saying to us, the mm-hmm. scriptures, mm-hmm. when we study them, right. We believe that we have eternal life in them, mm-hmm. so we should live by them as right. if yes. we understand mm-hmm. that we have eternal life yes. in them. All right, so we are we are still looking at the broken heart of Seder. Mm-hmm. It says many times in many situations, you know, you will hear people saying it was an act of God, mm-hmm. right? Uh, God getting the blame for doing uh, a lot of things that Satan would have done. Mm-hmm. You know, even the even the insurance people will tell you mm-hmm. that they, they they will pay out oh, okay. if it's an act it's of God. God. <laughs> you know, it's an act yeah, of yeah. God. And, you know, many people, as you brought out earlier, Sister West, mm-hmm. that some people their perception of God is that mm-hmm. you know he he does this mm-hmm. does does these these things that makes them uncomfortable and bring them into situations, mm-hmm. not knowing that it is mm-hmm. really God who mm-hmm. hears yes. and the devil mm-hmm. who brings us That's into right. these. Mm. situation. So he says Satan delights in war because it steals the worst passions of the human heart. Mm. Down through the centuries it has been his purpose to deceive and destroy and mm. then blame his evil actions on, on God. God. Mm-hmm. Yes, Sister yeah, what, 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 what did you take God, from this? God does not delight in seeing his children suffer. Yes. And so whenever a child of God because um because when other people that are not under his care that do, do, doesn't choose him yes um they have let themselves out there for the enemy to do any and anything to them and he's not a man that will force himself upon you you know yes. if you don't ask and summons his pr- protection and those things he's not gonna just force and even yes. out of mercy sometimes he still spares but when God permits a situation to come upon the child, a child of God, it is always for an important lesson. As I was sharing with you later, it's either to build our character, yes. it's to bring out something in us that we are not seeing, that is their dormant, we're not seeing it. Some um, character trait about us that needs refining, needs to cut out, so that we, it can be brought to our attention for us to start praying about it and be more um, aware of it. So as we are, you know, after a while, when you become aware of certain traits that you have, you're very cautious, you know? Yes. Well, I am. I, I am very cautious with, like, after I would act that way, or if a situation comes to bring out that way, I'm very mindful that the Lord showed me that I have this disposition. So, yes. And I would pray more about it. 
So, so, so it is that when he permits it, it's to bring out a character trait that he wants to refine, or it could be for his honor and its glory. Yes. So he uh, have he doesn't just delight in us going through whatever. It's always for an important re reason that leads to us getting eternal life. He don't yeah. he though he doesn't waste time doing things. It's always for or end up being for our good, yeah. or to bring us in a different place and situation that he wants to. Because sometimes you know. We will not make a move to do something until something extreme happens. Mm -hmm. No, honestly, yes. I'm telling you, like, for example, God would want you to move from this house to that house. Just using the problem ex um, example. Yes. But you would not leave because you hold on to something or whatever. God will make fire burn it up yes. just to make one better life come to just you. Right, you know what I'm right, saying? He right. has done that already to a person. Allow fire to, to, to yes. destroy their homes. For them to get something better because he right. wanted them to get a better house. But sometimes... When he's moving up on someone's heart to help them, they're not, they're not yielding. Yes. So he has to make something extreme happen. Mm -hmm. You remember what happened to Esau and Jacob? Yes. If God had not given him that limb, that limb. Esau's yes. heart would not have melted. Oh my word. So sometimes oh God will create wow. those situations to save you. Yes. So it's that situation that saved Jacob. Yes. Because he was coming with vengeance, you know. But when he saw his brother, him oh, look, compassion. he must say, no, I could have never want to do nothing to him. I'm going through enough in a life. Oh, look wow. on him. Wow. You know, so when wow. he went through that night of agony with God, he mm -hmm. came out looking terrible. Mm -hmm. And he went through an ordeal with that limp. He must say, yes. what kind of life him got through? We can't do nothing to him. What you know, a wicked wisdom. Do not, what no a wisdom. wisdom with God, man. Oh, what so wisdom. I'm saying sometimes there's wisdom yes. in, our, um, in our tragedy yes. with, with, with God because yes. he's doing a greater work. To put us in a different place where yes. we would not have been had he not permitted it. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. beautiful. As we as we as we come down from 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 the from mm -hmm. Sunday, I, there's something that you you you, you elaborated on that mm -hmm. I would just want to bring something out the mercies mm -hmm. of right. God. You know, while they when when we look at what mm -hmm. you know while Christ was there weeping, yes, he could have just said, you know, these people, I just want to leave them alone. That's but it true. was in that. That state mm. of agony mm -hmm. and grief mm -hmm. that he was saying to them, listen, when you see the abomination mm -hmm. that makes desolation, yes. spoken of by Daniel the prophet, mm -hmm. then whosoever is on the house stop, mm -hmm. let him not even come, come down to get to the table, let him mm -hmm. run mm -hmm. for the mountains. That's right. So, you know, even in all of this rejection, mm -hmm. yes. he was trying to save them. He was That's saying, true. listen. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to the signs. Mm -hmm. Even though you rejected me, but mm -hmm. I wanted to pay attention mm -hmm. to the signs. So those who were willing yes. to obey his mm -hmm. voice, they were still saved. willing to, to save help them. and to save yeah. them. Oh, mm -hmm. sister West, we awesome. serve an awesome yes, God. We serve true. an awesome God. We're going to go to Monday mm -hmm. because time is running on us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go to Monday. We're looking at Christians providentially preserved. Mm. Christian providentially preserved. What did you get from, from, from Monday's lesson? Yes, what I saw is that God is sovereign. Yes. God has the final say. And he rules in every situation. Yes. And so when um based based on what they went through. Um sorry, this this let me let me just remind myself of the topic to make sure the point yes. I'm making is yes. his prob Monday. yes, providentially preserved. Yes. You see, just as what you just alluded to before that he warned them and if you heed the warning you will be saved because see mm -hmm. they were spared because they remember what he said and so yes. they heeded it and they escaped, and they escaped. yes yes mm -hmm. so um the servant of the lord isn't white he says in the great controversy the loss of even one soul is a calamity mm. so uh, if, if we are we are we are painting this picture of what the lord said he will leave the ninety and nine save sheep mm -hmm. and go out on the mountain to find that little one, one little lost one. Yeah. To, to, um, to, to save mm -hmm. to save that one so I am trying to get a hold mm -hmm. of what this is really saying mm -hmm. to us as a church mm -hmm. as it relates to mission right to yes. mission mm -hmm. you know um, I, I, I was thinking as I go through this this lesson that mm -hmm. the providential preservation mm -hmm. that God wants to work mm -hmm. in the lives of his people as you made mention before <coughs> that we might not really mm -hmm. understand it right 
but mm -hmm. it, it takes faith. Mm -hmm. It takes believing that mm -hmm. if God leads me here, yes, He will, will keep me, take me through. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a mm -hmm. song. There's a song that says, um, "All the way, my, my Savior, Savior leads me. me. What have no, I? What have I to ask to side? But mm -hmm. I, I like to say, "All mm -hmm. the way, my Savior leads mm -hmm. me." Not to take me halfway <laughs> and leave me. That's right. So, that's so right. So I know mm. that whatever he mm -hmm. says, yes, he definitely yes. will do. And the, the, mm. the providential care of our Lord mm -hmm. is second to none. none. That's you know, we, true. We, we cannot explain it. Mm. We cannot fathom it. Sometimes we yes. even imagine mm -hmm. what will come out of this. But mm -hmm. we know that he cares and he will always mm -hmm. make a way. He's an expert way maker. Yes. Way. Mm -hmm. And obedience to his direction is paramount to our yes. preservation. That's right. All right. Any other point on, on Monday before we run on to Tuesday, Sister West? No, just that, that's to emphasize that he allows nothing unless he knows it is yes. for our growth. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. So I just want to, to, to bring out something here before we run on to mm -hmm. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It says here, in vain were Satan's effort mm -hmm. to destroy the church of Christ by violence. The great controversy in which the disciples of Jesus yielded up their lives mm -hmm. did not cease when these faithful standard bearers fell at their post. Mm -hmm. By defeat, mm -hmm. they conquered. Mm -hmm. God's workmen were slain, but his work went steadily. Yes. Forward, Amen. Forward. Amen. So, so mm -hmm. the, the, the death of each mm -hmm. saint yes. is a seed mm -hmm. that is planted. Right. For gospel. another one to come up. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so we're going to look at faithful amid persecution. Mm -hmm. Now, this yes. is very important, Sister West. Yes. Because mm -hmm. many people, they would say, mm -hmm. you have dry weather or fair weather, mm -hmm. Christians. <laughs> when everything is going fine, right, right. Oh, you're yeah. beautiful, everything you're is a good okay. Christian. Mm -hmm. But to be faithful among mm -hmm. persecution, Oh. Amidst persecution, mm -hmm. that's a different story altogether, sister. West. Yeah. What's your take on it? You know, that's that that can only take place when you really allow the Holy Spirit to live in you. Mm -hmm. And this is where the Holy Spirit is gonna become key. Where you have to make sure that each day you're having a walk with God to get yes. to know Him, so that when you know Him and you are in a particular situation, you won't say, "Is this God? Is this what?" Or, and, and whatever he permits, you just jump out, jump off board because he said, no, sir, mm -hmm. got to put me through this. No, sir, I'm going yeah. to do otherwise. I'm going to save myself. Yes. You see, we can't be faithful all by ourselves. Mm -hmm. and, we, and so we need the Holy Spirit to give us that insight, that strength, that endurance yes. to stick with it. Because if you notice, these Christians that were faithful, they had the Holy Spirit. Yes. They had a pure doctrine. Mm -hmm. So they understood what Christ is all about and they understand he was worth dying for. Yes. And so it is only until you reach that place of understanding that you can remain faithful amid persecution. Yes. Mm -hmm. So so then, um, what I what I got from this particular mm -hmm. um, caption, caption itself, faithful amid persecution. Mm -hmm. um, I... The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for right. and the evidence of mm -hmm. things not seen. So I'm, I'm, I'm seeing where faith and hope mm -hmm. is like hands and gloves. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It's like feet and socks. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm saying now that for us to be faithful mm -hmm. in persecution, mm -hmm. we must have hope. That's of right. Deliverance. Mm -hmm. Deliverance, yes. Because mm -hmm. the, the Hebrew boys, mm -hmm. they had hope yes. that even when Nebuchadnezzar's mm -hmm. fiery furnace was right. ten times, ten times hotter, hotter. Yeah. they believed that there is mm -hmm. no fire mm -hmm. blazing Mercy. that God mm -hmm. cannot take them out of it. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so while we are going through the different mm -hmm. persecution, the different challenges, the different perplexities mm -hmm. of life, it is one word that will help us mm -hmm. and that's hope. That's right. So if you have faith, Mm -hmm. You must have hope. That's right. Because faith means that you're hoping, mm -hmm. and you you know that God is gonna mm -hmm. come true. And and the degree that faith grows mm -hmm. is the more hope you have. Yes. In God, is the more strength your mm -hmm. faith takes on. Yes, and you know the element that you also need is mm -hmm. that love. Yes. Because love casts out all fear. Because oh, wow. when you're in persecution beautiful, and you beautiful. have the love of God, you don't fear anything. Yes, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because the Bible says. Um, 
he doesn't give us a spirit of, mm -hmm. of fear but yes. one of love and yes. power so yes. we need that is why we need god's spirit so that those elements can be present in us mm -hmm. hope faith love yes so that we can we can conquer you know yeah. as you as you mm -hmm. as you, you 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 brought that old sister west mm -hmm. my mind is taken back to pilot's judgment hall mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and even on the cross when right. christ said to, mm -hmm. to when, when christ said forgive mm -hmm. them father Man. Mm -hmm. but they don't even know that was what, love. what they're doing so yeah. as, you, as you brought it about mm -hmm. that love we must yes. have that mm -hmm. even even for our persecutors yes we ah, must have yes that love, love. yes knowing that even mm -hmm. though they're doing these mm -hmm. things we know the root of it yes it's because mm -hmm. of the devil yes by their being used yeah. yeah. and used. it will it, it will inspire them it can yes. inspire some yes. and leave us see an impression on them wow. that will eventually help them to turn wow. beautiful mm -hmm. beautiful the disciples face threats Mm -hmm. They face imprisonment, they face mm -hmm. persecution and death itself. Yes. Yet in the power of the Holy Spirit courageously mm -hmm. proclaim the resurrected yes. Christ. Mm -hmm. And churches multiply through Judea, Galilee mm -hmm. and Samaria. Mm -hmm. So as you said yes. rightly mm -hmm. that it inspires yes. the patience that we would show to mm -hmm. our persecutors. Right. Would inspire them mm -hmm. to say, No man. Mm -hmm. If 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 we are doing this to, mm -hmm. to this person, right, and and the reaction is mm. is, is is meted out with yes. love, yes, no man, the God that this person serves must mm -hmm. be the true God. That's right. You must know, this week I was God. serving someone at yes. work, and the person I don't know, but she always come with an attitude. Mm -hmm. I just puffed up and always I don't know what kind of life she has. So you know you can't say any. You never know why people right. are or they are. And the lady was just puffed up, and she's always like that. And you know, it is natural for us to give back an attitude because where you come and give me attitude for? Yes. You take out the problem from me for yes. is the you yes. know the yes. interpretation. So I said, No oh God, I would just stoop so low. Plus, furthermore, how I react can help her. Yes, yes. You know, I I, I just let allow her to do what she was doing. And then I just look at her and say, Are you okay? Because I'm asking her as if, are you yes. going through anything? Yes. And it's like she just stopped and wow. her face just changed. Oh her demeanor wow. changed. And I said, Oh God. A yeah. soft answer really, really turned it away, turn it because away then right. it changed her whole disposition oh, wow. and it just softened her. And I said, God, to you be the glory. Yes. That's why we need to follow you, you know. Yes. We need, because we can just change a whole situation and we don't know. If you had reacted in any way. Can you imagine? Wow. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man, Look at that. I really learned from that. Look at that. Look yes. At that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we're, we're going to run on to, yes. to Wednesday, but mm -hmm. there's something here that I want to, to bring out. It says, the bastions of hell were shaken. Mm -hmm. The shackles of Satan were broken. Mm. Pagan su superstition mm -hmm. crumbled before the power of the resurrected Christ. The gospel triumphed yes. in the face of overwhelming odds. Amen. The disciples no longer cowered mm. in the upper room. Fear danced away like a fading mm -hmm. shadow. What, what really caused that fear to dance away like a fearing shadow? The love of inside of them the love yes. that they had for christ and you know when i was reading it it said to me you know god yes. this is what it means when it says that the world will be filled with your glory what is the what is the glory of god his mm -hmm. character yes when the character is perfectly formed in you and i and people see the genuine love that mm. we have one for another yes i'm telling you many is gonna many are gonna run to christ yes. many will be offended by it because they're gonna mm -hmm. think we're too strict strict we're too whatever it is but when the perfect love is reflected in mm -hmm. us that's when God's the earth will be filled with God's glory yes. and many will come to Christ. Yes. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful, Sister West, beautiful. The gospel penetrated the remotest corners of the earth. Although the last of the disciples, John, died at mm -hmm. the end of the first century, mm -hmm. others picked up the torch of truth and proclaimed the living Christ, which brings us mm -hmm. to to right. you know to, to that time. place where mm -hmm. we are. We yes. are the ones taking the baton. Mm -hmm. And um we, as we as we live for Christ, mm -hmm. as you rightly brought out, the glory of God mm -hmm. will fill the earth, the earth. and mm -hmm. inspire others. and convict others to come to Christ who alone can say. All right, Sister West, so we're looking at Wednesday, caring for the community. Mm. And I, I like how the lesson changes each thought mm. because we're coming out of the, 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 uh, the whole thing about fear mm -hmm. and uh, being faithful in, in persecution mm -hmm. and here we are you now talking about caring 
for the community. And we, we look at the early Christians and we see where the church grew not only because its members preached the gospel. This, this one really got me mm -hmm. as I looked at it. He said the church did not grow because mm -hmm. its members preached the gospel, mm -hmm. but also because they lived the gospel. All right. So it's not how many tents we put up. I want wow. to ask you a question. When it says that they sold all their position, possessions, yes. did it mean that them sell off them house, all them land, and them left themselves homeless? I think what I it don't says, get that. Yes. I get the impression that whatever, you know, sometimes some people have excess, mm -hmm. them all have land put on, and them just have it for just whatever sake, yes. and this excess amount of money in the bank. Mm -hmm. As soon as they saw a need, they filled it. Yes. Everybody just rally around, and yes. I have an extra land, I sell my land, and mm -hmm. I share it up so that that person can be comfortable, say, so they need yeah. a home. That money, that land that I sell, the money I get, we put it together, take care of the brethren's need. Mm -hmm. If I have extra cash in my bank account, so I'm, I'm uh, yes. modernizing, you know, if yes. I have extra cash in my account, I know I'm putting it down for something, but this need, come need on. comes I up. I must yeah. have that faith that, oh, you know what, let me, the need is important now, it is here, I'm not ready to use this, God can replace it, or God mm -hmm. can let me get the thing in a different way. Yes. That's the place where God wants us to reach. Yes. Or definitely. if it means that we need to take in a person in the home until whatever city we, you know, somebody yes. live with you until. Yes. We're not there yet, to be honest. We really are not there yet. Because yeah. there is this element of we don't trust the person to come in our house. Mm -hmm. We're probably the person at Jinal. All yes. sorts of things. They never thought yeah. that the people yes. never try to trick them. Because you know, Jamaicans, we are yes. <laughs> yes. the Jinal and trickster. We're not yes. thinking more that we just have to help the person. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to investigate. I wonder if it's genuine or, you know? Yes. When I know we, we love to put a little stamp yes, on things, yes, you know, man. Say, which is real and which that is, is right. <laughs> yes, but you realize so when the brethren needs were taken care of because who have sheer and mm -hmm. give that is when the numbers were added yes. because people are so wow, what a love them are showed to me. And wow. they, never, they never just showed the love to them, brethren, you know? yes, it was shown to those who the were not of the faith, and, 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 and so and they were all. they added to the church daily through yes. that, not through yes. tents, yes, not through yes. tents, but because yes. of the love that they showed through kindness. Yes. So, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm getting from what you're saying, mm -hmm. Sister West, that preaching without living is a shortfall. That's right. Yes, mm -hmm. preaching without living is a shortfall. Mm -hmm. Now, the gospel is designed to make life better. Right? That's right. And absolutely, mm -hmm. no one dare to be the same after encountering the same mm -hmm. power of the gospel. Sharing, mm -hmm. caring, reaching in, reaching mm -hmm. out. Oh, yes. This is what Christ did and his unselfish love and commitment to preaching, teaching, and meeting mm. the needs mm. of fellow human beings in the name of mm. Jesus. This is the ultimate goal of the gospel. Amen. So, so we could sit here all mm -hmm. morning, mm -hmm. and we could talk all through the Sabbath, mm -hmm. and without us really getting the gospel in action. Mm -hmm. Scratching where it's gospel. itching. Yes. For the people, they have a need in this area mm -hmm. meet their needs. Yes. Yeah. So, and then so, leave it up to them to accept Jesus. Yes. Yeah, because sometimes we don't want to help them because we don't want to help them if they're going to accept <laughs> Jesus. No, we must leave oh, all motive like and everything off. No, but true. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's yes, man. We have experience in yeah. some situations mm. or some, some ways mm -hmm. where you you know you, you would have even certain remarks mm -hmm. would, be, would be said. You know, those people, they, they, mm -hmm. they only want God to help them, but mm -hmm. they're not accepting him. Mm -hmm. We should leave it. Leave it. As you said. That's right. It will our, be a testimony against them. Yes. Yeah. So our part is just to do, do. what we ought to do mm -hmm. and leave, leave the, the rest to God. To God. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I, I love the way that the disciples went mm -hmm. through and they, they broke bread. Yes. And as I said, that mm -hmm. um, it's not that you think that they, they, they deprived mm -hmm. themselves. Right. They, they could have in some instances, mm -hmm. but, but most of the time it mm -hmm. would be what you can can give mm -hmm. you shouldn't hold on to it right you know mm -hmm. the hoarding it and yes saying, well, you know, hoarding what, up what needed in the rainy day you know? <laughs> okay, imagine. you know and sometimes the rainy day <laughs> don't come don't come mm -hmm. so the need as i said no. if it's present we mm -hmm. should address address it, the need mm -hmm. as it, as it is. all right so um any other point on caring for the community mm -hmm. so, no not really right mm -hmm. so um we, we see where the early Christians, they, they deeply cared mm -hmm. for the people, just yes. as Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And so the New Testament church, it, it was this unselfish love and commitment mm -hmm. to meeting human needs, yes. combined with sharing the good news of the gospel mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit's power that made such an impact on mm -hmm. the world 
in the early centuries of the Christian church. Do you, do you think mm -hmm. that we're going to get back to that place? This we place, are. Because the Bible speaks about it. We're going to get back to that place. The, yeah. the world is... When he says that um, the earth will be filled with his glory, as yes. I said before, yes. that his character will be mm -hmm. um, perfectly re um, restored in us. So yes. we will display those right. type of behavior that they did in the early church. And as the, as the mm -hmm. great controversy comes to its mm -hmm. culminating yes. stage, mm -hmm. we're, we're going to see more and more mm -hmm. of God's character yes. revealing. Because yes. the, great, the great controversy will only bring two mm -hmm. results. One, yes. of, one or two. One of two. That's results. right. Yeah. So you're going to be finding yourself mm -hmm. Being like Christ, yes, or being, being like, like the enemy. The enemy. Yes. <laughs> so, caring for the community is mm -hmm. what the Lord has called the church to, mm -hmm. to do, Sister Webb. We're going to look at Thursday. Yes. Uh, the time is coming down enough. We're going to mm -hmm. look at Thursday, and this caption the a legacy mm -hmm. of love, a yes. legacy of love. Now, when I look at the the, um, the lesson here this week, two words came to my mind, love mm -hmm. and care. And, mm -hmm. and it's very rare, mm -hmm. if, if, if not impossible, mm -hmm. for you to find one without the other. Because you that's can't true. say no. Yeah, and that's true in care. care. Mm -hmm. that's and, true. and when you care, mm -hmm. it is because you love. You love. Right. So <laughs> love and care is like mm -hmm. shoes and socks. Yes. So guess what, Sister West, as we look mm -hmm. at this lesson, I realize here that um, talk is, talk gets a little done. Yes. Talk gets little known. It is, you know, we could talk and talk and talk, <laughs> as I said before, and nothing gets done. But love is the language mm. that every nation, kindred, tongue, and people yeah, understand. understand. That's now, true. if you if you show mm. love to a Chinese man, mm. you, you don't know, have to be able to speak yeah, Chinese. That's right. <laughs> he knows that you're expressing mm. care. Love and love, love to that's him. true likewise if you, you don't you don't speak spanish mm -hmm. but if you're if you're talking to a man from spain mm -hmm. and you're you might not understand his, his ver verbal yes. um, language yes but, but the language of love that's right he will not miss that that is so true. you know it's just like mm -hmm. crying and the other emotion that yeah. we see we can read that on mm -hmm. any face yeah, of any, any face. nation mm -hmm. kindred talk and mm -hmm. people and this is the identifying mark of true worship and mm -hmm. discipleship mm -hmm. when we love one another and care mm -hmm. for each other yes. both reaching in mm -hmm. and reaching, reaching out. out yes out there all right so it says that love was the norm of christian communities mm -hmm. in the first few centuries mm -hmm. right and we we brought up before that we we have to we have to reach that place when we show the character Mm. of God yeah. and we know that God is love mm -hmm. and everything he does out of love yes we might not see that way but mm -hmm. it is it because is. Mm -hmm. he loves us and mm -hmm. even when God rids the world mm -hmm. of their nightmare yes this nightmare of sin and mm -hmm. sinfulness mm -hmm. you know the Bible says that every knee shall, shall bow, bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, is Lord. And mm -hmm. um, as we, we, we get the wrap-up signal, mm -hmm. Mr. West, I, I know here that once we show the character mm -hmm. that God wants us to show, yes. we would be right on track mm -hmm. of doing His will. Amen. Let's All right, Sister West. So we're going to mm -hmm. be wrapping up. Is there any final yeah. point, any takeaway that you would want to just give us? I just one want take to say away? that we cannot understand the working of God's providence, but we must not lose heart. We must not lose heart. The inward man can be rev revived yes. every day as we spend time with the Lord and learn of His love and become more like Him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, my final takeaway to, um, to, 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 to us and mm -hmm. to all those in the class online mm -hmm. is that talk is meaningless. Mm -hmm. Talk is meaningless in this warfare that we're in. Mm -hmm. The assurance of victory lies solely in the expression of love and selfless service to humanity and a life devoted to God in true worship. Amen. This always it was a pleasure yes. sitting with you on the set again. Yes, I, man. I have learned so much. I always learn mm -hmm. a lot when we, yes. when we Me too. work yes. together. Yes. And I'm so happy this mm -hmm. morning that mm -hmm. we could have you know, gone through the lesson. Yes, and, and shared. I pray that as we express through the lesson this mm -hmm. week, 
God will pronounce his blessing yes. upon us and all those in cyberspace. God yes, bless you. So you too. God bless all those mm. out there in cyberspace. Mm. God bless you. Mm. Mm. Alright, we just close in prayer, Sister yes. Wes, please. Loving Lord, we indeed want to thank you for all that we would have reviewed. And we pray that as the, the points that were brought out, Lord, we will take heed and we will benefit from it. So we thank you now and, be, and ask you to leave your blessings upon us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, everyone.
Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath to you. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Let's praise the Lord. God is truly amazing. Brethren, this morning I'm giving God thanks. I am thanking the church. The Bible said that when we are united, we will do a marvelous work. And so this morning, from the personal ministry decks, we are saying thank you, church. Thank you for partnering with us as a church to work the fields of soul. And so this morning, we have a mighty harvest of souls that the Lord has brought into his kingdom. And so as we go forward for 2024, brethren, we have a work to do. The work is not finished. We have just begun. And so this morning, going forward, our small groups will be in our communities as we continue to reach out to souls that we can bring in a great harvest for the Lord. We have some plans where we are asking every married couple to work with two individuals that they can come into a relationship with the Lord. Working along with the Family Life Ministry Brethren, every married couple will work with two individuals. If the family consists of six, you will work with six individuals to bring those individuals into a relationship with the Lord. And our singles, you are not being left out. You are asked to work with one individual each to bring these individuals into a relationship with the Lord. And so April 20th will be the day where Inter-American Division will be doing a downlink to Jamaica and across Inter-American Division where they will be asking the different churches in the different district to baptize this individual on April 20th, June 29th, and September 29th, where we will have Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church as a site for that big day in September 29th, brethren. So all of us here who are seated in the presence of God this morning, we have a work to do. Brethren, are you in agreement? I'm not hearing a man. Are you in agreement? Man, the answer is feeble. Brethren, are you in agreement? Yes, we are about the master's business. And so I want to encourage everyone this morning to adopt the gospel commission from Matthew 28, verses 19 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the ages. And brethren, we are living in the end of the ages. So this gospel is being fulfilled today. I pray that every member visitors who are seated here will be about the master's business. May the Lord bless you. For one, two, I'm just going to ask the tech team at this time to um, play the announcement. We have the announcements, they have been recorded, so we're going to ask at this time that you just listen to the following announcements. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Kindly listen to the following announcements for today's Sabbath, April 13, 2024. From the Prayer Ministries Department, our Tuesday prayer and fasting experience will be held every Tuesday from 9 a.m. to 12 noon, both in the sanctuary and on Zoom. 
The Zoom link will be sent at the appropriate time on our WhatsApp notice board groups. There will be an early morning prayer session on Wednesday, April 17, 2024 on Zoom starting at 4 a.m. All are invited. The prayer ministries kindly reminds you that they are available to pray with you during our Sabbath services. Kindly indicate to any member of the ministry or an usher your desire to be prayed with and you will be directed accordingly. There is power in prayer. Children's Choir There will be Children's Choir practice this afternoon at 3.30 p.m. Possibilities Ministries you are invited to Possibilities Ministries Day next week, Sabbath, April 20, 2024, starting at 9.15 a.m. The Possibilities Ministries are encouraging us to promote the commandments of God as we drive. These plates are available from the ministry, and funds contributed are in aid of persons with disabilities. Health Ministry Monthly clinic resumes tomorrow, Sunday, April 14, 2024, beginning at 10 a.m. Additionally, there will be eye screening services available, and this will commence at 9 a.m. Pastoral Office A Justice of the Peace will be here at church every Wednesday between the hours of 3 p.m. and 5 p.m. Death Announcements the funeral service for the late Brother Wolf will be held at the Portmore SDA Church tomorrow, Sunday, April 14, 2024, beginning at 10 a.m. A bus will be provided for transportation to the place of internment, which is Kendall, Manchester. Birthday greetings. Birthday greetings are going out to Sister Nadia James and Brother O'Neill James, who are celebrating their birthday today. Greetings are coming from your church family. Communication Department Members and visitors, we are always happy to have you worshipping with us here in the sanctuary and we welcome you. We kindly ask that you observe the following requests. 1. Please do not walk in front of the camera. 2. Please do not place your feet on the benches. 3. Please do not allow children to walk on the benches with their shoes on or sit with their shoes on on the benches. All announcements to be shared on Sabbath should be sent to a member of the communication department no later than the Thursday evening preceding the Sabbath. Other methods of sharing the announcements are via 1. Church Board WhatsApp Group 2. Facebook or Instagram message at Pomor SD Church and 3. Email pomorsd at gmail.com. Information shared after Thursday evening will be announced the following Sabbath. Thank you and enjoy the rest of the Sabbath. Phone 1, 2. Thank you so much, um, technical team, for those announcements. Today, we want to welcome you to this very special Sabbath. It is our New Believers Nurturing and Discipleship Day. We want to welcome those who are online with us and for those who are here visiting with us. Will it be your very first time, your second time? You may be a frequent visitor. We welcome you. And at this time, I'm going to ask all our visiting friends, visiting friends meaning you are not a baptized member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, will you stand at this time? Will you stand? All our visiting friends, will you please stand? God bless you. We welcome you. There are others at the back. We welcome you all. We are so happy that you have chosen to worship with us today. And we hope that you will have a, one of our visitor's cards. If you have not yet gotten one of our visitor's card, please don't leave without signing up one of our visitor's card. Our ushering team should have them in their person. Um, the visitor's card, we will have your name, your address, your telephone number, and then you will tick the appropriate box and let us know how we can serve you here at the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. So please ensure that you get one of our visitor's card so that we can serve you in the best way possible. So we thank you for joining us. To all our 
new believers who are here today, I'm just going to ask all our recently new believers, will you stand at this time so we can recognize you? All our new believers who are here, will you please stand at this time? They are standing, they are standing all over. We welcome you. We welcome you. Will you say amen, everyone? Amen. We welcome all our new believers. Just want you to know that we will have a special lunch for you with the leaders of the church, um, with the membership coordinating committee immediately after the divine service so you don't leave today. You'll be staying with us and we'll be having a special lunch with you. And then there will be a special reception at 3.30, 3.30 this afternoon as we will extend to you the right end of fellowship and we'll give you a special certificate. So we welcome you and we pray that you will have a wonderful worship experience today. Welcome to this great Seventh-day Adventist Church here in Portmore. You may be seated. Also, we want you to take note for those who are planning to be a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, next Sabbath will be your Sabbath. Next week, Sabbath on the 20th of April, we'll be having a special baptism all across the Inter-America Division. All churches in Jamaica, all over Inter-America Division, we'll be having baptism during the divine service time. Right, a special baptism. And so those who are here, you have not yet made up your mind and you wish to be a member of the church, next Sabbath, we will be having that baptism and welcome you as members of the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. There will also be Possibilities Ministries Day and we'll be having special presentations. So we invite you to share with us. Um, you would have heard that the monthly clinic resumes tomorrow, but it was not announced that we will be adding to our service that we offer here in Portmore, the pedi pediatrician. So the pediatrician will be here, and I believe that the pediatrician will begin from 9 a.m. So we want you to bring out all the children, all those who need the service of the pediatrician, please bring them out tomorrow, 9 a.m. We, uh, we will open up, that's our monthly clinic. The Portmore Seventh day Adventist Church wants to create a culture of care, love, and affirmation. And we believe that the best way to get our members involved is let them know how much we appreciate them. If you agree with me, will you shout amen? And affirm them. And so we ask for you to do so as we will be deliberate from the pastoral team. In time after time, we will be affirming some of our young people, and we will be presenting them tokens during the pastor's time as we continue to create that culture of care. Also, we want you to know that at Portmore, we believe not only in the study of the word, but we believe in demonstrating what we have studied and displaying it amongst each other. The, the, the studies that we're having is about care and love and must be shown to the world that we belong to Jesus Christ. John 13, 35 says, And by this all men shall know that you are my disciples, when you have what? Love one for? And this love can be expressed in many ways. Tomorrow we here at the Portmore Church hope to express this love in our support for the Wolves family. We will be having a Thanksgiving service. I have been in touch with the family. And... Um, I don't know if Shauna is here. Shauna, if you are here, will you stand at this time? Uh, Shauna is not here as yet, but I've been in touch with the Wolves family. We have been conversing on the telephone. They are here in Jamaica. And Brother Wolf, for those who do not know him, served this church well. Will you say amen, everyone? Served the church well. Was a deacon, was a deacon here, and he did ministry and care for those. And many of you, your lives were impacted by his ministry. And so to show your support and care, we invite you tomorrow to be here in your attendance to support the family, 10 a.m. for that Thanksgiving service. We also want to encourage the Sabbath school classes to ensure that the members of your class that are sick, you visit them and let the pastoral team know. Um, last week, I mentioned that one of our brothers is in the hospital. Um, he died Wednesday, right? 
died Wednesday, and I thank Elder Campbell and Elder Paul that they visited that person and represented us. Right, I made the announcement and Elder Campbell and Elder Paul visited that person. And again, I say to the church, right, all of us won't be able to visit, but if that member is in your Sabbath school, it is important that that Sabbath school visit that member, that that member will know how much we care and love them. You agree with me, will you say amen? And so we're going to ask the care coordinators to ensure that we continue in that ministry of care and love to our members in our Sabbath school and inform us, the pastoral team, that we will play our part in visiting our brothers and sisters. I'm going to invite our church clerk at this time to join me, um, Sister Monica. We have a second reading that we should be doing. And then we have a special baby dedication service that we will be conducting as well. And so I'm going to ask Sister Monica. Where is Sister Monica? Sister Monica is here. All right, Sister Monica is always in the clerk's office doing clerk's business. That is the commitment of the members of the Portmore Church. Sometimes you and you call on them, they are in their station doing work. But we are happy for her ministry and we have a baby to be dedicated. Um, and so I'm going to be asking if the family members are here, the family members and those who are here to support this baby dedication, will you please stand at this time? Family members and those who are here to support the baby ded dedication. Will you stand? All right, so I'm not seeing the family members. All right, I'm seeing the family members standing. Right, right. So I'm going to ask the members of the family to join me and the elders to join me at this time. And we're going to sing, um, Jesus loves the little children. Let us join in singing, Jesus loves the little children, as the family members join us at the platform. That sing with us, Jesus loves the little children. so happy for um, the parents here, Nathan. Uh, Nathan, um, that's the prophet of David. And Nathan Francis, my namesake. And uh, Lijana, and Tavia, Liana, Liana, Daniel Wallace. We're happy that's the mother. We're happy to have you. And young Adelia. Right, Aviana, Francis, it's good to see both mother and father standing here, bringing their child to be dedicated. Do you agree with me? And so today we are very happy for you parents bringing this little one to the Lord. And I want to share with you from the book of Proverbs 22 and verse 6, very familiar text that is well known. Train up a child in the way that he should grow, and when he is old, he shall not depart. Today as you bring this little one to be dedicated to God, I want you to know that this child belongs to God. This child's rightful owner is God. You have been given the responsibility as parents to train the child in the fear of God. And the word of God says, if you follow God's will for your life in the training of this child, she will never depart from the Lord. When the foundation is laid, the principles of the word of God are followed carefully by both parents. The child benefits from your life. The child benefits from that godly instruction and will follow the way of God. And so today as you come, I want to encourage you to train this child by teaching the child how to be obedient. You teach the child how to be obedient by your obedience to God. By your living a life that is pleasing to God. Teach the child how to be respectful. You teach the child how to be respectful in how you communicate with each other. In the home, there should be no quarrel. 
in the home the peace of heaven should reign. And in such you will teach the child how to be respectful. You must teach this child as well how to value the things that are good and to reject the things that are not good. The child will be leaving your home to go to school. The child will be leaving your home as you grow that child to go to college. And therefore, the lessons taught will become values in this child's life to, to, to protect her from many hills in society. And so if this is your duty, your commitment to dedicate this child to the Lord, I'm going to ask that you respond to these two questions by saying, we do. Do you recognize that this young child, Adelia Francis, is a gift from God? And is it your commitment to dedicate her to God? Do you pledge to use the church, the home, the school, and whatever means available to you that young Adelia will grow up to love the Lord? God bless you. Do your members of the church pledge to pray for this family and to create an healthy environment that this child will grow up to love the Lord? If this is your commitment, let us respond by saying, we do. God bless you. I was going to offer one of the elders to hold the child, but from the moment the daddy brought her here, she's looking at me. It seems as if she's saying that I'm her daddy too. And so I will readily adopt her, and so I'm going to be holding her into my hands, and then I'm going to be inviting, I'm going to be inviting Elder. We're going to be praying for her. So Elder will hold the mic, Elder Paul, and I will be holding this baby. Feels good to be holding a little girl baby here, and I'm not sending a message out there. I ask the church to stand with us as we, as we pray. Eternal Father and our God who art in heaven, it is because of your love towards us that we come this morning in your courts to lift up your name in praise and adoration. We give you thanks for this family that brought their loved one, their child, to you. Lord, you have blessed them with this bundle of joy. And we pray, O oh God, that you who have carried her thus far, we believe that you are able to cover her under your almighty wings, protecting her and supporting her in whatever way she needs. We pray for the family, the parents. I pray, O oh God, that you will unite them in love, that they will impart to this child the principles of heaven. Pray, O oh God, that you will keep them as under your almighty wings. You will give the parents the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to grow their child right in the way of righteousness. I pray, O oh God, that you will bless this little one. You will protect her from the diseases that are around. You will give her sound mind. Holy Father, you will, as she grows, she will grow to love you and to love her fellow men. I pray, O oh God, that as she grows, the parents will teach her the way she should go. And when she is whole, she herself will be committed to you. Pray that you will be the parents, be the extended family members. I pray that you will give them the support, that they will give the parents and this child the support uh, she needs and they need. And may we as a church family, Lord, continue to be a support to them in whatever way we can, pointing them to you who to know is life everlasting. We say thanks for hearing us. We say thanks for answering us. Through Christ, and we pray. Amen. Amen. This child belongs to God. And so, 
The Lord bless thee. The Lord keep thee. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. And the Lord grant you his peace now and forevermore. Amen. Here we will give you the certificate and Dahlia's first book for you to read it to her as she grows. This is a very wonderful book about the families for today. So you read it to her. God bless you. Congratulations to you both. And I want you to know that we will have another meeting. Do you agree with me? We will have another meeting. We will have another meeting because I need to do something else. And you know what I need to do else, right? All right, I'll talk to you later about what we're going to do next. God bless you. Welcome. And you can now take your seat. God bless you. All right, so we have another item to be done. The transfer will be done at this time, the second reading. This is the transfer of membership of Brother and Sister James, Brother O'Neill James and Sister Nada. They are coming to us from the Black River SDA Church in St. Elizabeth. And this is the second reading. I move that we accept these members upon their transfer. Is there a second to accept this? It is seconded. All those in favor? Thank you so much. Those who oppose, it is so carried. We're just going to ask those persons, if you are here today, will you please stand um, so we can recognize you. Will you say amen, everyone? We welcome you, members of the Portmore Church. And when we will be marching out, we're going to ask for you to join me and the platform party marching out so that members of the church can greet you and welcome you. God bless you and welcome to the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church. Before I take my seat, we have been praying for many of our members that are sick. And um, Sophia Garcia, she did a surgery and I saw her today. Um, Sophia, will you stand? Um, I know I Sophia Garcia. We are happy to have Sophia Garcia in church with us today. Will you say amen, everyone? Um, she asked the church to pray. She did a surgery and here she is today. We are very happy to have her. And all the other members who we had prayed for, we welcome you today. God bless you as we worship God. Today in this very special New Believers and Nurturing Day, we pray that we will truly be blessed and taken to heavenly places. Enjoy the rest of the Sabbath as we worship God. Please stand with me because I was about to take my seat and I noticed that the boxes um, occupy the seat. That means we have been blessed again by the blessings of the church and we have bought some items for the technical team and so we are going to be dedicating them this time. So will you stand with me as we present these items given to us right, um, by the contribution of each member to the work of the church we were able to purchase these items for the technical team. Uh, will you pray with me now as we dedicate them to God? Father in heaven, we thank you for the faithfulness of the members of the Portmore Church, contributing to the ministry of this church. And you have blessed us again, and we have purchased some items to help with the transmitting of our services to the world. We pray then that you will now accept these gifts that have been given to us as we dedicate them to you. And pray, God, that they will serve us well and long. And those who will be angling them will angle them with care, knowing that they have been dedicated to the service of God. We commend them to you. We pray your blessings upon each one as we dedicate these items to your cause. In Jesus' name we pray.
We have come today to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And so I ask you all to join me as we lift our voices in adoration to the God of all gods. I ask the congregation to stand as we continue this service. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. For he is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. But the Lord made the heaven. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. The church is now at worship as we enter into the divine session of this day's service. stillness of this moment, we invite your Holy Spirit to tabernacle with us. We pray, God, that you will move in a still, small voice, speak into every heart, so that we will hear the voice of God and leave, saying, it was good for us to be in the house of God. Have your way now, we pray, as we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's time for praise and worship. This morning, I'm here representing Sister Morgan, and I'm happy to join with the New Believers Praise Team as we sing, To God Be the Glory. And you're invited to sing. The words of these songs will be on the screen, and we're going to sing together these two beautiful hymns. We'll start with, To God Be the Glory.
praise the Lord. And that's why it's sweet to trust in Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you really believe that it is sweet to trust in Jesus, let me hear the congregation say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's go. It is so sweet. And you're doing well, but you can do better. So hopefully in this song, everyone will open their mouth and praise the Lord. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His words, just to rest upon His promise, just to know the said the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him. number 83. Oh, ten. 
can kneel at this moment. You can kneel as we petition the throne of God. A mighty fortress is our God. You are a bulwark that never fail. This morning we your children come in your holy presence on another Sabbath to worship, to adore, and to praise your majestic name. For there is no other name whereby we, your children, can go but to the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for taking us safely through another week. As we come before you, Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We ask that you will wash us and cleanse us of all our sins that we have committed throughout the course of this week. Sins that we have confessed, sins we did not even recognize that we have done sins of commissions and sins of co omission we ask your father for the outpouring of your holy spirit in our individual lives be with every worshiper born before you right now father i pray that your holy spirit will saturate every heart that you will take control of every lives and that you will draw your children to your bosom strengthen our faith in you because if there is ever a time we need you God we need you now for we are living and we are dwelling in a grand and awful time the heart of men have become desperately wicked there is no fear for God there is no love for God but in the name of Jesus we call on you today because you deserve the glory you deserve the praise and as we come in your presence father we invite your holy spirit walk up and down in this place i pray even now that you will be with the one whom you have appointed to speak your word i pray that you will anoint him from the crown of his head even unto the sole of his feet fill his cranium with your words and speak through him to us and may each and every one of us say it was good for us to be here until then father as you prepare to put in your appearance prepare us too to meet you on that grand day whether we are sleeping in the grave whether we are alive make us faithful until the day when you shall come Remember the sick among us. Remember the fatherless, the motherless, those who are out of job. Father, provide, bless, keep, save, sanctify. We thank you, Father, for hearing. We thank you for answering. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
Happy Sabbath, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath, bigger boys and girls. Today, we are going to hear a story about a king for Israel. And um, so, Israel had a prophet by the name of Samuel, and he was very obedient to the Lord. Everything the Lord told Samuel to do, he would do it. But then Israel also had a king, and his name was Saul. Now Saul was not as obedient as Samuel. He, he did not listen when the Lord told him to, to do things. He was very disobedient. So the Lord decided that he no longer wanted him to be king over Israel. So the Lord told Samuel the prophet to anoint a new king for Israel. Now, how he, he told him how he wanted him to anoint the king. He told him to go to the house of Jesse. Jesse had sons, and he was to have a horn with oil, and he would pour the oil on the, the one that, he was, that God chose to be king. So Samuel went to Jesse's house, and he had a feast, and he called all of Jesse's sons together, and he started, he, he chose each son and poured the oil, tried to pour the oil over their head. But each time he tried to pour the oil over their head, the Lord said, no, that's not the king. Every one of the, the sons, the Lord said, no, that's not the king. So the, the Samuel asked Jesse, do you have any other sons? And he said, yes, I have one more son, David, but he's in the field feeding the sheep. So Samuel told Jesse to send and call David. And Dave, he sent and called David. When he sent and called David, Samuel poured the oil, and the oil flowed on David's head. So David was anointed to be the new king for Israel. So the Lord said that David will be obedient to him and will do his will, and he will take over from Saul. So Saul will no longer be king in Israel. Now, what have you learned from this story today? I learned to be obedient. What else? You must respect God. Yes. You must listen when God talks to us. Always listen to God. Good. Who wants to pray for us today? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for everything you have done for us, dear Lord. As we are in your sanctuary, dear Lord, I want you to bless all of us in the church, dear Lord. The pastors, the attendants, and everybody else, dear Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Happy Sabbath Church. As we prepare to return our tithes and offering, I invite you to listen just for a moment to today's stewardship focus. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruit of all thine increase. So shall thy barn be filled with plenty and thy press shall be burst out with new wine. This scripture teaches that God, as the giver of all our benefit, has a, has a, has a claim upon them all that is his claim should be our first consideration and that a special blessing will be attended all who honor this claim. Ellen G. White writes, 
A faithful tithe is the Lord's portion. To withhold it is to rob God. If all professed Christians should faithfully bring their tithes to God, his treasure would be filled. As we give today, remember every man should freely and willingly and gladly bring tithes and offering into the storehouse of the Lord. Because in, in doing so, there is a blessing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we enter your presence, Lord, with thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for taking us through another week. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We ask, Lord, that you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness and forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sorry. The beacons will now wait upon us for the tithes and offering.
bring in all the tide into my storehouse, that may, they may be meet in my house, and prove me now. Here they said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be not be room enough to receive it. Sabbath, everyone. Today I will be reading a scripture verse, and it is taken from St. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. And it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Heed the word of God. Amen. You may be seated. We've been having a wonderful Sabbath so far. What do you say? Today, our New Believers Nurturing and Discipleship Day, where we have been focusing on all new believers, you would have noticed um, that those who had participated so far, they're all new believers, our children's story. Um, and um, on the choir, we have some of our new believers as well. And the praise team today, we have to share the word of God with us, one who have been serving in ministry for some time. During his ministry, he has given keen interest to church growth through the spiritual and social development of members, church planting, and membership conservation. As a church leader, he's an advocate for diverse opinions and the distribution of responsibilities for the accomplishment of goals and objectives. I speak of Pastor George McCullum. He believes that membership care and membership conservation are important for successful evangelism and quality church growth. Pastor McCullum is also a published author in 2022, he published the book, I Want to Stay, Help Me, over 100 recommendations for youth retention. Pastor A. George McCullum is married to Imogene McCullum, Associate Adjunct Director for the Jamaica Union. They are the proud parents of two young adults, Georgia a biology educator and MSc candidate in molecular biology from the Northern Caribbean University, and George, a practicing attorney at law. A part of his philosophy is that a person's true value far outlives lifespan. If value is equal to lifespan, then there is no contribution to the future. Today, we welcome Pastor McCollum, the pulpit of the Port Moore SDA Church, and he's no stranger to us. Previously, he had served in, in the capacity of an intern pastor years ago, and we welcome him today. He now serves the Central Jamaica Conference as the stewardship director and also as our ministerial secretary. Before Pastor McCollum comes to share the word of God, will be favored with a song of meditation. And after that, he will now take the pulpit to share the word of God. Please breathe a word of prayer for him. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning to everyone. And a very pleasant Sabbath to you. It's good to be in Portmore. Sister West. And it's, I'm very happy for the leadership of Pastor and Sister West and certainly the elders department heads here and by extension all our members with initiatives like these um, taking care of our new believers amen I, I am indeed happy to know that the Lord has brought me back to Portmore uh, and to share in, uh, in a very special way and uh, in truth and in fact to see some of the older faces I cannot overemphasize that. Some of us who were in the construction of this building, and I still remember when I was building block in the foundation across there. Amen. And thank God uh, this church is building the kingdom, not just physically, but spiritually, congratulations to our new believers. And uh, this is your day. Amen? New believers, this is your day. New believers focus a call to serve, repositioned for more. And uh, the Portmore, yes, yes, I the Seventh-day Adventist Church repositioned for more and here is your more your new believers amen in the truest sense that's what the more is all about souls for the kingdom and i want the portmore members to give yourself a big amen amen you went out and you indeed garner souls for the kingdom. Oh, by the way, our elders department heads 2 30 this meet this afternoon will meet to look on some very important and interesting ways in which we can relate to the conservation of our new members. But having said all of the above, it is important to note. The scripture reading that was done earlier, we are, we are going to spend some time on that. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. 
In fact, all that will be said for the rest of the few minutes that I'll be here will be on Matthew 28 and the last part of verse 20. Um, so let us pray and get into sharing. Your heads are bowed. Loving Father, we are so happy for you increasing the membership of the Portmore Seventh-day Adventist Church or the Church for the Deaf. We are happy to know that this physical increase will be more than just physical, but it will be spiritual. We'll see growth educationally. We will see members, family members of these individuals being brought to your eternal kingdom as well. Be with us now as we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me quickly share the basis of this in addition to Matthew 28, 18 to 20, 19 and 20, and we are focusing on the new believers. But by extension, all our members, because you'll be hearing things that apply to you as well. Now, when we look at Matthew 28, there are two, two times the word teach is mentioned, two times. The first said, teach and baptize. You can talk. You can talk with me. Teach and baptize. That was a crusade. The evangelist would have taught. Isn't that so? You will agree with me. And then he said to teach again to observe all things. Are you with me? Now the second teaching applies to us. As far as the new converts concerned, it follows, therefore, Pastor, that the first few weeks after the crusade, after the first teaching, should be more teaching in the church for her new believers more than it is preaching. Because it said, teach again to observe. The crusade is finished. We will now have to teach them to observe all things. Now, who are they observing? The membership of the church. And I want, to, I want to state that categorically. They are observing what is happening, how members treat each other, and how the members will treat them. They are also learning the doctrines of the church. I want you to get that. And let me say this before I forget. I would want to suggest, Pastor, that every single member of this church makes an opportunity, makes an effort to personally greet each new member. I hope that is making sense to you. It should not be a case where you just pass and look across, oh, that was a newly baptized member. And you are so many, so it may not be. I figured you would have started doing that already, a number of new members. But even on the street, if they did not see you in church, make an effort. Can you imagine that you invite a small group of persons to your home? And then maybe the father, the mother, or the leaders of the home, you know, they're always talking to these new members. But the children, maybe one other, they never say hello to the, the new persons that you invited to your home? If as members you don't do that, you don't, you don't make an effort to identify yourself with the new member, it will be like a family member who desert, ignore the new member in your home. Hello? I want you to get that and share with them. I mean, having said that, for the new member, there are four basic things that you should know as far as the church is concerned. And basic, I know, by this I should say, the four areas of your source of education. So I'm speaking to the new members, but by extension, all, and those who are listening, understand that we are Zooming. Listen this very carefully. Number one is the Bible. Number two is the spirit of prophecy. 
Number three is the manual. Every new member should have access or should access the church manual. And when we go through the presentation, you're going to see why I state that. And the fourth one is what we call a position paper from a general conference. It means, therefore, also, Pastor, that the new members should have an understanding of the, of the organizational structure, the leadership structure of your church that we will do on another occasion. But the point I'm making is that to get into a new organization, a church, you ought to know some basic things. So your educational um, uh, focus or areas of education is really the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, and the manual. And I will tell you why. So I'm addressing you from the spirit of prophecy from the book Evangelism, page 341. New believers, and by extension, other members can, can appreciate this as well. And I may need somebody to help me read, but I will begin. In the book of Evangelism, page 341, it says, I would address you, servant of the Lord, Ellen G. White is talking. I would address you who come to a knowledge of the faith, speaking to those who just got baptized. You are young in the faith, and there is great need of you walking humbly with God and learning and of learning daily in the school of Christ by dwelling particularly in the meditation or in meditation and conversation upon the lessons which he gave to his disciples still talking to new believers there are a few doctrines and things that our new believers ought to know. In fact, he said, when he said teach them again, it means to teach them everything about the church. Family life, eating or health um, education, stewardship. And by the way, I'm going to be emphasizing stewardship today. You need, yeah. You, there are some things, and there, <clears throat> I'm sorry, and therefore there are some books, there are some literature that as new members you should have. So the whole gamut of being educated as a new member is extremely important. I'm going to be emphasizing stewardship today, and so I'm coming, and notice again, whatever I'm saying is coming from the spirit of prophecy. He said, the message of Christian stewardship, and here is where leadership comes in. Teach every convert, and this is from evangelism, page 249. Teach, this is for leaders, Teach every convert, every soul converted to, is to have the light about the Lord's requirement for tithes and offering. Every soul. So what is it about this tithes and offering? The message of Christian stewardship continues, it says, It is part of the leader's work to teach those whom we bring into the truth. To bring the tithes into the storehouse as an acknowledgement of their dependence of God. I don't know if all of our new members know what is tithes and offering. The details. In fact, I don't know if all or a number of our members who have already baptized in the church know the importance of tithes and offering. But it follows that no efforts that a new convert should be fully enlightened as to their duty to return to the Lord is his own. We're spending time on this. If leaders, and I'm still in the book on this time, Evangelist page, Evangelism page 249. If leaders neglect to give the new converts instruction on these points, the servant of the Lord is talking. We leave undone a most important part of the work. What work are you talking about? Evangelism. So when individuals are evangelized, when individuals become members of the church, the servant of the Lord is saying that this is a most important part of their being. So why is that so? Because stewardship is a lifestyle. Follow me very quickly on this. Now, before your conversion, before you become a part of the church or accepting Christ, you were still 
a steward. Everybody is a steward, whether or not you're a member of the church. But the difference in accepting Christ, you are now a Christian steward. And Christians, Christianity is a lifestyle. So stewardship is a lifestyle. One of the problems where we have many long membership, we, members with long membership in the church, many years, not being faithful, faithful stewards, is because they did not learn from the beginning. It is extremely important for you to understand that as a new believer, my lifestyle is changed to be a Christian and therefore I'm now a faithful Christian steward. Before you were just a steward. But now you accept Christ, you're a Christian steward. So follow this. Servant of the Lord is still talking. So new converts must be thoroughly instructed. Page 337. Notice where the instruction is coming from. The book Evangelism. It follows, therefore, that if new members, new converts, are not faithful stewards, you cannot be faithful disciples or evangelists. I want to get that in as much as we can't say a lot on that. So listen to this. Our efforts are not to be seized because public meetings have been discontinued for a time. So the crusade is finished. And two important things are to happen here, and I, I commend our personal ministry's leader. I heard it this morning. One of the first things that should, be ha should happen to these new believers, they should know how to witness. Hello? Now, amen is weak, but the point is strong. Every new believer should know how to witness. From the beginning, and even it, if it is to go and knock on a door, they should be taught how to knock on a door and say, I'm inviting you to church. B to that is, every new believer should be attached to a department uh, of their liking and interest. So share with them what the department is all about. Do you like this? Yes, and they, some of them have already come in with an inclination for something. What we're talking here about is that the new believer should be immediately involved in church activities. With the main one being evangelism. Amen? So efforts are not to be seized because public meetings are through. And the new converts need to be instructed by faithful teachers... And teachers here have to do with the Sabbath school teachers, personal ministry leaders, regardless of what department you head. So you don't have to be an elder to be a teacher. The youth leader is a teacher of all, not just the young people, but others. The new converts need to, need to be instructed by faithful teachers of God's word that they may increase in knowledge. So you are seeing where the second teaching is in Matthew 28. Teach again because they ought to increase in knowledge. Um, Romans 10 17 said, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. One of the problems we are having in the Seventh day Adventist church is that we have a lot of long standing years of membership, but little knowledge of the church. And so you have to have this teaching in Sabbath school. You have to have this teaching in AY. You have to have this teaching in Bible class. And you have to have the teaching from the pulpit. One of the worst things that you could have, Pastor, is to have a new convert in the Seventh-day Adventist church and you're a, you're a Seventh-day Ad, um, Seventh Adventist Anglican. You're a Seventh-day Adventist Jehovah Witness. You're a Seventh-day Adventist
person to be in contact. And then you start to tell them some of the bad things about the church. And that they should not, they can come to church when they want. And then you don't have to return a faithful tithes and offering. Oh, the Sabbath is to be kept this way or that way. And I think in Portmore you have very few of those. Amen. Did I hear a big laugh over there? Yeah, you have very few of those. Individuals who know that you have a problem with your Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. If you have a problem with your spiritual life, then you may not be the best influence for the new member to observe. Remember now that they are observing all things. Isn't that so? So follow me. They must now be surrounded by the influence of most, most favorable spiritual growth, for their spiritual growth. So we are going back to the fact, having said all of that, that now that you are a new member, of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, a Seventh-day Adventist Christian steward. Your life is different. So the whole idea that stewardship is a way of life. And we're going to say more on this. Considering that to be so, and I, I, the cross is somewhere there. I hope you can see it. I'm going to be saying something about that at the, at the end. Somebody help me read. Okay, do, I, yeah, do I have help with the reader? Somebody may want a position to help me read. New believers and by extension all members, what the word of God is saying to you, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What are these things? These things we can find them in um, 3 John. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. So here you have material things that you should seek. But he's saying ensure that your soul is secured first. It's not that you won't get these things, but God should come first, quickly. Now here we go. Back to the manual, and I said you should know your manual. So I'm going to share something from you, from the Seventh-day Adventist manual, that you're never a part of, the church that you're never a part of. The financial plan of the church serves a larger purpose than appears in its financial and statistical report. What is, what is this saying? The financial aspect or tithes and offering. It is as important as the Sabbath. Oops. Is it because we, we are all agreeing with that? Why do you all agree? Ah, new believers, get this. Tithes and offering is equally important to keeping the Sabbath holy. Okay, let me put it another way. Is Jesus Christ, God the Son, equally important to God the Father? Is God the Son and the Holy Spirit equally important to each other? So, follow, you're going to answer this one too, right? Do you agree? That tithes and offering is equally important to the Sabbath. Why? Because they're both holy. They, so in, if we rob God of his tithes and offering, we are guilty of Sabbath breaking. Because they are both holy. And I'm not, saying to, I'm not saying to you, new believers and by extension everyone, if you rob God of tithes and offering, you should not come to church. I'm simply saying you should make it right because Sabbath keeping, that Sabbath keeping for you could be in vain. Hello? Let me just plug this in, by the way. If the Sabbath did not come, could you keep the Sabbath? If the Sabbath, the seven-day Sabbath, so here is Friday. 
Seven day Sabbath did not come stewardship, man. Could you really keep the Sabbath? Talk with me, no man. Okay. If God didn't bless you, could you rob him? We can't rob God until he blesses us. What are you going to rob? And I want you to get that as serious as being your, uh, your Christian, uh, Christian steward is concerned. We're running on. I figured I have limited time. So the point is making here, it's not just money, it's not financial, it's not just a financial report that you hear. It is a spiritual thing. Tithes and offering new believers is, takes on a spiritual component just as how you come to worship God. In fact, it's an act of worship. The system of sharing the funds with the world field, as outlined in the General Conference Work Policy, Sorry, serves a wonderful purpose of unifying the church's spiritual work throughout the world. I think I'm going to skip some of these after this one. Tithe is held secret for the work of the ministry. Servant of the Lord is still talking. For Bible teaching and for the support of conference administration in the care of the churches on of fields outreach missionary endeavors. I would like you to know, and I, I think I'm, going, I'm not going to run ahead of myself, Tithe shall not be spent on other work, new believers. Your tithe and your tithe. On paying church or institutional debts. Or on building programs. It's a different financial structure as far as the church is concerned. Except as approved on the general conference working policy. Elders and other officers, as well as the pastor and conference and institutional employees are expected to set good leadership examples by returning tithe. Well, I, I did not intend to bore you. You feeling bored? Are you bored? Are you, are you okay? New believers, did you know? Listen to this. Did you know, now that you're a member of the church, isn't that so, Pastor? They're members of the church. I want you to know that the church cannot disfellowship you. Well, put it this way. If you commit adultery, according to the manual, and I'm emphasizing new believers, know your manual. If you commit adultery, the seventh commandment, the church can disfellowship you. If you refuse to return tithe, the church can't disfellowship you. Tell them, I'm not returning tithe, or you can't disfellowship me. Because, you see, tithes and offering, listen to very carefully, the withholding or the robbing of tithes of or and offering, the Lord reserve that for his own judgment. I, I hope I'm saying it correctly. So whereas in the manual, you can be fellowship for so many other things. If you withhold your tithes and offering, you can't be disfellowship. What? The Lord said, I will deal with that one. He said, that one is not for the ordinary court. That one's for the Supreme Court. It's God himself. And I will curse you with a curse. So, for example, you do not want to um, give any offering. And the elder said, okay, because the offering has to do, deal with the lights. You know, pay for the lights and water. Isn't that what the offering is used for? Yes. When you come, we are going to turn on the bulb, turn off the bulb on where you sit because you don't give any offering. You don't give any offering, don't even drink a tip of water. That's what the offering is for in the local church, isn't that so? Among other things, right? Cleaning the church. If you come to church and you are not giving any offering, anywhere you walk, wipe it up. That's what the offering is for. And that's okay. You can say, fine, I will do that. And maybe that is, that, that is their way of cursing you. 
But when you don't return a tithe, the Lord said, reserve that for me. You are cursed with a curse. Have you ever heard Jamaican cuss some bad word? Jamaican are the best persons to, to line up words, you know. Curse words. You don't know that, right? You don't do that. Have you ever heard they line up curse words? So if a Jamaican curse you good, you know, you, you, you smell bad. They don't even touch you. And you smell bad. But God said, I'm going to curse you with a divine wrath for my tithe and offering. So listen, this very carefully. And that is why as new members and members by extension, we are not to play with that which is God's. Amen. Running down. So elders and others, uh, officers as well as pastors, we are to set good examples. And quickly, I, I think I got off on that by making the point. I wanted to make the point that the servant of the Lord is also saying members who openly rebel against tithing and doctrine should not hold office. Hello? You can't have a leader or a member you rebel. Tithe, tithing is unbiblical for that matter. Oh, tithe and offering, that's not how the church should run. The organization, biblically speaking, says you should not hold office in the church. I'm going to run out on that. And as new members, you should know that up front. Members who sporadically or conveniently return tithe, especially to benefit from office, should not hold office. Well, Pastor, this one is not applicable because to you. Because you don't have some members who, when it's come on, coming on to election of officers' time, then you see more tithes coming in from them. Because they know this, by the way. So it is sporadic because they want to hold office. Um, it said that you should not. We're going to emphasize that some other time. Members who acknowledge mistakes, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying this one for what it worth. Members who acknowledge mistakes of unfaithfulness or difficulties of returning tithe and are willing to work with the leadership or are working with leadership to improve their spiritual relationship and stewardship, including faithfully returning and systematically their tithes and offerings should not be denied. Now, in which they can make a contribution to the church. I'm going to skip some of this because we may have to explain that a little more. But let's look quickly as I come closer to the end. Members should be assisted I'm speaking specifically to new members. And by extension, all the members who, to whom this is applicable. Members should be assisted by church leaders. And these members should be assisted, are educated by church leaders in the following areas, but not limited to. A, can you help me? A, management. One of the reasons why well, let me, let me be a little, um, hasty, hasty, a little bit out of order, you want, with some of the new members, I'm almost sure, as I'm sitting here, that some of you already come into the church in debt, owing, like some of us who are already here. And then you're going to say, Pastor, talking to your pastor, how am I going to return? I just come into the church, just came into the church. How am I going to return a faithful tithes and offering when the income that I am getting is not even sufficient? By the time I return, I pay my rent or the mortgage, I am now a member of the church. I know I'm going to return 10% and an offering equivalent, maybe 5% of that, and then I have 85. God, you see that that is not practical. So you have bad ma money management from before you came into the church. And some of us has poor money management after we came into the church. Hello? So in reality, even though deep down in your heart you want to be honest, you don't have the money. You don't have the finances. So the, the, the suggestion here is that not just new members, but all members, especially those who are having challenges should be assisted 
in money management. How are you going to do it? I can't deal with the details. But in addition to that, family budget. Budgeting is extremely important if you are going to be faithful in your tithes and offering. What about financial responsibilities to the local church? You ought, to be, you ought to be taught the details of your financial responsibility to the local church. I alluded to some a while ago, the offering, this is what the offering does. And the church will have to the, um, allocate that as far as budget is concerned. You must be educated to the spiritual, biblical, and theological principles of tithes and offering. These are principles that you just don't take it for granted that because I got baptized and I'm converted by the Holy Spirit, I'm converted to come to church on Sabbath. I didn't tell you that I'm converted to returning tithes and offering. Hello? And these things we have to now, this is where Matthew 28, 19 is coming in. We have to teach them. Teach our new believers that, 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 that returning tithes and offering is spiritual, not just financial. So let me ask another question. Pastor, am I, do I have limited time? And tell me when it is. Listen to very carefully. Do you think, and those in the back as well, you will go to hell because you don't return tithes and offering? Oops. Maybe I should ask for sure. For let me see the hands of those who believe that you will go to hell because you don't return a faithful tithes and offering. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. You're not sure. <laughs> let, me, let me see the hands of those who believe you will make it to the kingdom. No, you don't like hell, so let's lose kingdom, right? Let me see the hands of those who believe you will make it to the kingdom. Or put it another way. Yeah. You will make or you will not make it to the kingdom if you chose to be unfaithful with tithes and offering. See, raise your hand. You will not make it to the kingdom if you chose to be unfaithful in tithes and offering. But it's not the money. Whether they want to believe it or not, yes, you won't make it. But it is not the dollars and cents. It's not the financial part of it. It is being disobedient to the principle of stewardship. I want you to get that. And I want you to get it straight. So God is saying to us, your stewardship lifestyle is what's going to determine whether or not we make it to the kingdom. And tithes and offering is one of that. And we have a responsibility to teach the spiritual and the biblical and theological principles of tithes and offering. Members should be assisted by church leaders for growth in the area of stewardship with an emphasis on tithe. The servant of the Lord is still speaking. And I'm about to finish. I, I just get the feeling that you got the message. And uh, I don't have to finish the presentation for you to be satisfied. Have you, my wife nowadays said you're not eating too much. You're not eating well. I notice you're not eating. But I'm watching my waistline. Sometimes you get, you don't want to eat off everything, right? Let, don't, let me see those who are watching their waistline. You're watching your waistline. Yeah, yeah, it becomes necessary. I don't want to get too big belly. So listen, to, you, the food may be good and nice, but when your belly full, stop. Amen? So I'm about to stop, but I'm going to, so I'm going to go to the two more slides and share something with you. Um, I'm going to shift. I go, I'm going to the cross, so spend some time on the cross. Last few minutes. Remember I said that, um, well, let me ask the question again. In another way, was Adam and Eve, were Adam and Eve stewards? Okay. Before sin, were they faithful or unfaithful stewards? After sin, 
Were they still stewards? Huh? Were they faithful or unfaithful stewards after sin? Huh? After sin, they became unfaithful. Isn't that true? In fact, it was because they changed their lifestyle by sinning why they become unfaithful stewards. God said, don't do that. God said, to do this. That disobedience is unfaithful. We're looking at the cross. Keep your eyes on the cross. Follow me, new believers. Christ came. So as a result of that, I use it this way, a gulf was created between man and God. Isn't that so? You agree with me? Yeah. Sin, full steward, and here is God wanting to create us back into that image, to be faithful. Who bridged the gap or the gulf between faithful and unfaithful stewards? Say it loud, it's okay. Jesus Christ, by dying on the cross. So listen to this. Listen to this very carefully. Every person, every church member, every new believer, older, long-standing member who deliberately chose willfully to be unfaithful. You are deliberately denying the death of Christ. I want her to soak in. And it is, it is this that we are going to stand. And we are going to pray. We are going to pray for this. We are going to, we are going to pray. And I don't have time to explain the last slide. I'm not going to get into it. Question is asked, what do I return tithe from? Gross or net? God comes first. Not the government. Hello? So you return a faithful tithe. A tithe that is faithful is the one that is from gross. The one that the Lord blesses you with. But the pastor and others, the stewardship leader, will flesh that out at another point. But if God comes first and he blesses you, it means that you return to him faithfully from that first aspect or is increased. But let's go back to the cross. And I want you to stand. I want you to stand at this point. I, I want to finish. And I feel much more comfortable when you're standing. Let us all stand. We are going to pray to this. I think I've said a mouthful, and particularly for the new believers. The emphasis is your faithfulness in all things, to include your tithes and offering. Now, the details of this, the leadership of the church may assist you, but I'm, among all the things that I have said, I want you to, be, to, to, to remember that tithes and offering is equally important to you accepting the seventh-day Sabbath or keeping the Sabbath holy. The Sabbath is no more holier than the tithe. What? The Sabbath? Never heard that before? I sh I'm almost sure you heard it before. If we are unfaithful with our, and that's how important your tithes and offering is. And God is saying, though financial that may be, it is not just a financial, but it is testing our allegiance to God. It is making a difference. Just as I was said, when I keep the Sabbath holy, I recognize that creation belongs to God, including myself. When I return a faithful tithes and offering, I am remembered that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And he said, this one tent is mine with a liberal offering. 
Amen. And finally, new believers, brothers and sisters. God will not ask us for more than what we are able to do. What he wants us to do is to learn how. And for any reason at all, we are short in our knowledge. He's willing. I do not want, we are about to pray. I do not want any of us to leave here today not having even a teeny weeny bit of better knowledge of God and his holy tithes and offering. I'm hoping, Pastor, that as we go into other sessions, we'll be able to explain more. But if we are going to be faithful to God in everything, our tithes and offering must be included. May God help us as we give ourselves to him. I'm giving you myself, Lord. If you give yourself to the Lord in the first place, I don't want to miss this. Yes, you're standing. If you give yourself to the Lord in the first place, Lord, I belong to you means that everything that you possess or have belongs to the Lord also. So your first offering is not money. Your first offering is you. Being a living offering to the Lord. Your heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Gracious, eternal Father who art in heaven. Today we have new believers. And there may be others who were baptized maybe two or three years ago. And for whatever reason or reasons, not as faithful as we all ought to in our tithes and offering. But help us to understand that stewardship is a way of life. It is not a sporadic activity. It is not something that just speaks to finances. It is not something that speaks to time or talent alone. Stewardship is holistic as far as our life in Christ is concerned. And as we address our new believers today, we pray, Lord, that through your Holy Spirit, they will understand that this is a very important part of their spiritual being. We pray that where they may have financial challenges, Maybe with work, not getting enough money, their, their expenses much more than their income. And the same thing may happen to some of us as members, long-standing members. We pray that we will be converted in the first place. We pray that our conversion will lead us to knowledge and our knowledge will lead us to repentance. And where we have come short, Heavenly Father, we ask that you will help us. To gradually, if not suddenly, reach to the place where you can say, faithful thou art as a steward. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. And we thank you for our new members. And we pray, Lord, that they will be faithful in all things. So that when you come, you can say to them, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of my salvation. Because you have been faithful over small things, I will now make you to, be, to inherit greater things, which is eternal life. May your Holy Spirit take full control, not just of our new believers, but all of us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you. You may want to remain standing for the closing exercise. Right, the praise team will be coming to sing our closing hymn. And as they sing the closing hymn, we are the pastoral team of the Portmore Church. We want to pray for every visitor that comes to our church. We don't want you to leave, so we're going to invite all our visiting friends to join us at the altar. I'm going to call upon you. You are here. You are visiting us. Will you come to the altar as we pray a special prayer for all our visitors who came to church today as we sing the closing hymn. Just join me now hymn at the number, altar. Hymn number 343. I free 
final message will be preached. The last person will respond to the voice of God and accept Jesus Christ. Then Jesus will declare, it is finished. Today we are happy for the visitors who came, not members of the church, and we want to pray for you because we appreciate you coming here. You came here because the Spirit of God brought you. And as a church, we want you to know that we will keep you in our prayers. And if you did not fill out one of our visitors' cards, I just want you to raise your hand and indicate that you didn't fill out one of my visitors' cards because we have a visitors' card that we give to you. That means that we will keep you in our prayers and we'll call you from time to time to check up on your progress. If you have not received the visitors' card, just raise your hand. So we will have someone just to give you. We're just going to ask the elders and others just to join me. Those who have not gotten a visitor's card, ushers, just to give them a visitor's card at this time. Just keep your hands up. You have not gotten a visitor's card. Please assist me, ushers, to ensure that they get a visitor's card right now. Ushers who are here, just assist me quickly with a visitor's card to ensure that they will have their names at this time. Members of the church, we will be praying at this time. We will be back here at 3.30 to have a special reception for all our new members. However, at 2.45, we meet with all our elders, all our department leaders, and our membership, membership conservation team as we go through the nurturing plan for our new believers um, at the Portmore SDA Church. And then we invite all the members of the church to a special presentation on faith in our AY program. We will be exploring faith and sharing what faith is. And the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Therefore, faith is a prerequisite for everyone who will make it into the kingdom of heaven. And so you would want to hear our youth sharing about faith as we hope to make it interactive so that we all can learn about faith and live blessed by God. Today, my brothers and sisters, will you bow your heads with me for one minute? Those four members, we are just praying as we allow those who are filling out their cards just to fill it out in one minute, then I will pray the prayer. So please pray. For one minute, you're praying for consecrated life to God. Praying that you will be stewards of God and faithful to him for one minute. Then I will close that one minute in prayer. Amen. Amen. Our gracious, loving heart, loving Father, and our God, we thank you for our visiting friends, young and elderly. They all came because they heard your voice speaking to their hearts, and they wanted to know more about you. We thank you for visiting friends, and we place them in your hands. And pray, God, that you will be near them. Pray that each day they will hear the voice of God calling them to a closer walk with their Savior. We pray that they will respond to your voice. Accept Jesus as their personal Savior and walk in obedience to his will. May you bless them. Whatever challenges they have, we place them before you. We know that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot bear. So we pray that you will minister to their needs, O oh God. Give them your grace and your strength that when they leave here, they will leave knowing confidently that the Lord will be with them. That whatever the challenges, the difficulties that they face, God will be their strength. 
and God will be their help. May you bless them individually. May you help them to walk with you. And soon and very soon, may they all accept you as their personal savior so that they'll be saved in your kingdom. We commend them into your hand and pray that you continue to be with them. Heal, guide, and direct them until the day you come for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Welcome again. And you can now take your seats. All right. God bless you. ushers to sisters we will be now um, be able now to be leave the church quietly and resume back at 3 30 for that special service i'm just reminding all the new believers that we will be having lunch upstairs um, in the lunch room sorry um, we will all be having lunch together with all our new believers, so please stay behind. God bless you. Eternal. 